connecting, connecting, connecting. There it goes. There it goes. <laughs> hey guys. Hello. Turn the sound oh yeah, you guys probably don't want to hear double of us. I know we're really entertaining, but that might get annoying. Haha, mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. How's everyone doing out there tonight? If you guys can hear us and see us and you're already in here, go ahead and let us know in chat. <laughs> Jingles, look at my toes under the table. Yeah. It's gross. That's a weird dog English. Hey Margie, how are you? Make sure you tell Jace I said congrats on his um, on his deer. I was excited to see that in your comments. It's always nice to see somebody else that hunts and especially successful hunters because <laughs> I'm not always successful. <laughs> so it gives me hope. <laughs> you can hear and see us. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Margie, because with Streamlabs, it's a little shaky sometimes. I'm going to have to try something different. I hear StreamYard is like the place to be, but... I'm weird about new things, so. We're going to wait to see if we get a couple more people in here. I have this picture. Oh, do it. Hey, I don't know if you can post on my Facebook page, but you're more than welcome to post on Mulberry Branch. I don't know if I have that open, so you might be a really good, like, guinea pig for that, Margie. <laughs> but yeah, post it. I'd love to, I'd like to celebrate uh, more people that our outdoorsmen that are successful, especially like the young kids, because it's really important for them to have um, good life skills. And I think hunting is one of those. Yeah, I think uh, this year will be the first year we take our daughter out too. So. Yeah, we're really excited. She was really excited too. I don't think she kind of understood. We were trying to get her ramped up for youth season and she just was kind of dragging her toes. Plus but, we had some stuff pop up, like yeah, the llama issue and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, the llama issue so. and then we had- A little sidetracked. Yeah. But, the donkey came yeah. and but then at, right after it was over she's like when are we going out and I'm like well the yeah, next yeah like the we season set up the stand like on the day months. of youth season yeah. and she's like so when are we coming out here i'm like uh well, not for a to, while yeah, my dear a, you have to wait for gun season now so, so. give her some time to yeah practice. it was different for sure i had to block his face out for, that is fine i go mom go mom for protecting him mm -hmm. because you never know you never know oh, that's his there. first bow deer that's oh, special that's so special there's a sort of a unique feeling when mm -hmm. you get him with a bow definitely mm -hmm. you, know, you said he took it with a crossbow right that's really cool because awesome. i'm having issues with my compound bow so i'm trying to rub elbows with someone that's got a, a crossbow that i can practice with maybe tomorrow um, it's warm here though, so deer aren't going to be moving right now. So I wouldn't be sad if I missed this weekend. It wouldn't be terrible. Mm -hmm. When it gets warm like this, deer just don't move. Plus, we got a couple get togethers with some friends and family. So, yeah, yeah, I'll, definitely. Uh, stay busy with. So, we're going to try squeezing some farm projects where we can this weekend. Yeah, this weekend's busy. What do you got going on this weekend, Margie? You now, we've got like a church group visit to a local farm that has um, like a corn maze and pumpkin patch and yeah. it's just a really really neat place and it's actually it's last year so we're really trying to make sure that we're going to get out there to it the owner just got really tired of having to run all of it by herself and that's that can be really tough when someone's trying to run a business like that that's yeah. so intensive and it's like mostly family they do a lot i mean they have like a little children's area that mm -hmm. has like games and little I think they have like a farm chore list and they get through and collect Yeah, they do. They've the got farm. this little thing. It's, it's called like little farmers and like they have to go through and collect items from different activities. Yeah. So like one of them's like milking a pretend cow and like harvesting potatoes or carrots that are like in a sandbox. They have to dig and find them. It's it's really neat. Like they have a it beehive. They have to go get like little the honey from. So it really is neat. Cleaning out my living room for new oh, furniture. Exciting. Ooh, new furniture, finally. Isn't that that's a great worth feeling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great feeling when you get rid of the old and in with the new. I can I can totally that that sounds awesome. That sounds really, really good. Yeah. What kind of furniture are you getting? Are you doing like um a love seat and a lazy boy type new furniture? Are you getting like a new entertainment system or what's going on there? Hey Isaac, how are you? 
I heard you guys have donkeys in with your goats too, and they are wonderful, fantastic guardians. That's really nice because we were, I was apprehensive because I was getting a lot of mixed reviews about donkeys with goats, hence why we got the miniatures, but yep. yeah. Yeah, we've fallen in love with them. Our daughter's out there every day with them. Yeah, so. she is. She is. Well, Marge, you got a good lifespan out of that, 15 yeah, years. That is Can't a good complain. lifespan. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling them, like, hey, don't give too much yeah. away because we've got episodes that are coming up that you guys don't know anything about. But I'm, I've been a little slothly mm -hmm. this week. Um, we've been running a lot. We've got a lot going on. So editing is kind of, like, the last thing I want to do. And, like, the last few things that we've been doing around here are, like, intensive film-wise. And there's, like, two hours of film. And I'm like, how do I get this down yeah. to, like, 12, 15 minutes? And I was struggling. Love seeing recliner. That's so nice. Have a nice place to sit. Do you have any pets? Because like we have indoor dogs that will not lay on them per se when we're home yeah. or looking. We can be home and not looking and they'll get up there. But like when we leave, they're they're horrific. They, yeah, they total they sneak furniture. Up. You're getting a pony in November, Isaac? Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. That is really, really neat. So you're getting like a Shetland pony or like a Welsh pony. I know there's... They're different types of ponies. I'm not well versed well, in pony, ours, but I had that when I was growing up. Was that Shet? I feel like Shetland? it was a Shetland. It was yeah. very naughty. Yeah. Dotty. It was is a little, Dotty. Yeah, she could be Dot honoring. Yeah. Dotty the naughty pony. Yeah. <laughs> hey, rustic traditions. How are you doing? I'm so excited for you to get a pony, Isaac. That is so neat. Now, is it going to be a boy or a girl? Um, is it just like a fun animal, or do you have a purpose for it? Because not all animals have to have purposes. No. I know even though like we're on a homestead and we try to say like a lot of our animals should have a purpose. The, the main word there is should. They should have a purpose. Most of them do have a purpose. But like we have a, a Nigerian dwarf buck out there. He's like 10 years old and he's not worth anything. Like we have not gotten babies out of him. So he, but he's a sweet boy. So he just, he stays and he's a teaser buck. He tells us who's yeah. ready for babies and who's not. So. A rustic Traditions wants a pony too. Isaac, if you want to know our birthdays, so that if you can like maybe like get us a pony, or maybe Rustic Traditions would what love would to give you a birthday. A I don't know, we find something. <laughs> It'd be friends with our donkeys. It would be friend with the donkey. I can't post a picture on your Facebook. Oh, poo. I might have to. Well, thank you for trying, Margie. I appreciate that. Maybe I will have to alter that where people can actually post because I would actually, lo I would love to interact more with people on my Facebook page rather than me just like throwing information at them or what's going on yep. and all they get is the comments. I'd like to open it up where people could share things that's going on with them and we could see it too. So no. that would be really, really nice. Isaac, she's a bit bigger. She's about 54 inches tall. It's a girl and she's broke to ride. Oh, that's fun. <gasps> wow. Broke to ride. That's pretty cool. 54 inches. So like Lola the donkey, miniature donkey is like 34, I think, 33 at the wither. So mm -hmm. wow. That's that's quite that a bit a tall... bigger. That's that's quite a bit bigger. Almost two feet taller. Yep. That's not bad though. Broke to ride is nice. Then you have a purpose for, yep. for them. Then they're not just total hay machines. We used to have a horse, but she was just, she was a lot. Yeah, she was. She was a lot. She was a handful. And that was my fault. When I bought her, I was told that she was kid broke and anybody could ride her. And really, I should have brought my saddle and settled her right then and there and rode her. And But now I, I trusted. And you shouldn't really trust sometimes. So yeah. I learned my lesson there. Rain was a fantastic horse. I feel like she had been um, rodeoed on or had been a barrel horse because... The thing you turned her around anything in the field like she wanted to go like she could turn on a dime too much for me and definitely too much for my daughter your girls would love a sweet pony all rustic traditions well you know christmas is coming up you know <laughs> so margie's talking about her dachshund up there where i miss Listen, margie talking yeah, about her dachshund yeah. she's got 11 year old too old to jump on furniture so funny story um as you know we have the two dogs mm -hmm. and uh the one's bigger and for supper tonight, we were supposed to get deer steaks. And I had them sitting out. This is a funny story. And I have them sitting up funny. on this tall banister here. And uh, we were going to eat some steak fries with them. And uh, so I went to realize we didn't have any steak fries. So me and my uh, daughter went to go grab some. 
come back home and the plate was gone. And our bigger dog, June, had jumped up there and pulled them down and they were she, working on them. She apparently likes venison yep, a yep. lot. And I'm cool with that, but I like venison yep. more. So. so her punishment was she didn't get to finish them. They were still half frozen. So yeah, and then she had to watch the yeah. cat eat them yep, through the window. Yep, so. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get steaks. We uh, ended up frying up some bacon and eating them with the fries. Yeah. We had to make do. So. Yeah, we used our own jalapenos from our garden. I canned them, and I didn't film it. It was yeah. just one of those things. I'm not really a prolific canner yet, mm -hmm. and I know canning can be a little dangerous if you don't do it right. And I feel like, go through my guinea pigs right here, um, canning... I don't want to make a video on something where I could actually make somebody sick if I tell them the wrong thing. So I, I actually want to get a little bit more experience. But yeah. they were fantastic. The brine was good. And they were hot as fire. Yeah. <laughs> they were hot as fire. But I let them sit up on this banister. Because you can tell, like, this is kind of like a catch-all. So I brought all my jalapenos yeah. in and kind of let them um, ripen. And like here, and like a lot you needed like a tissue red. while you were eating them because yeah. your eyes and <laughs> He started are, eating. He's yeah, like, yeah, I need a napkin to blot yeah. my head. I'm pretty sure that if you were worried about Corona, that would kill it because <laughs> they were hot. It. They yeah, were hot. It would kill it. But anyways, on that note, so I learned that basically I think I have to tie up meat like a, like a bear's like a in bear. a house. Yeah, <laughs> hang it from the ceiling fan you see up there behind us or somewhere up high. Or you or just could, put it on a plate and put yeah. it back in the fridge. Yeah, true. But they were still frozen. So I'm like, yeah. I want these to well, thaw out before now. she got home. And Yeah. And we he was trying yeah. to be an awesome husband yeah. and like have all of it ready when I got home yeah. from work. Yeah. No. no I came June home. thought I was going to be an awesome husband and feed her. And <laughs> yeah. They were both gnawing well, on Well, technically them when, she was right. Yeah. It was one of those things where like they just either. froze and stared at me as soon as I walked in. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> So. Yeah, I don't know if that's like a funny story. It's funny now. Yeah, it's more frustrating when I saw it. Yeah, like I came now. home and <laughs> Joe's like, you will not guess what the dogs did. Yeah. And all I could think was like, oh, Jesus, please. Yeah. <laughs> and he was mad, so I knew like it had to be bad. So it was bad. It yeah, was bad. I don't want to lose our deer meat. Well, no, that's I mean, we, we work yeah. hard to, to harvest venison. So. It's a lot of time and practice. Like using it. So Isaac said, we are keeping her somewhere right now, and we are going to go tomorrow to ride her for the first time. Oh, that's oh, exciting. Oh, Isaac, that is so exciting. Get some video of that or yeah. capture some of that. That's yeah. awesome. Get that and have your mom post it so I can see it on Facebook. That's so cool. I'm really happy you guys get to go do that. Hey, Tasha, don't, don't apologize for being late. We're just happy you're here. Happy you're here. My dog loves deer meat, cooked or raw. Ours does too, apparently. Yep. Yeah, ours does too. <laughs> I love canned deer meat. I know you've looked into that. I've looked into canning, but like like I've said, I think I've read too many horror stories. And like, especially around this time of year, like when on whenever you're on any type of homesteader forum, like canning is a very hot topic. And people will flat out become rude and fight over their methods and whether botulism comes into play or not. So it's kind of made me kind of step back. So for like a rookie like me, it's just really intimidating now I've done jam and jellies, so those are those are easy. Mm -hmm. And even like the way that I canned the jalapenos was just like in a water bath. That's what the recipe called for. I'm not um, too intimidated by that, but I don't have a pressure canner. And the fact of like a bomb sitting in my, cause you see all these crazy pictures where people are like, look, I tried to can and like yeah. everything's blown apart or melted. And I'm like, oh my Lord. Like if you give me a bomb in my kitchen, it's gonna go off. So oh, I, yeah. I need to get a little bit more confident in that. I dehydrated some jalapenos and powdered them hot, hot. Ooh, I can it, imagine. I wanted to do that, but now I'm... Our, ours volunteered last year. Like, yeah. the ones we left out there, they came back. Like, I only planted and started maybe eight plants total, and... I just ended up canning all of them. Yeah. But and that's the, a good idea. In the jalapenos we ate tonight, I sort of like them seared a bit, so we did throw them on the, the griddle for a bit. And it smoked up the house. And yeah, our he daughter, put them on and his yeah. face was over. I'm like, get out of the steam. <laughs> Since they were hotter than usual, it, it was like pepper gas in the house. And then my yeah, daughter was coughing. And like, like, we're all like. <laughs> yeah, I had to open a window. But they were good. Yeah. They tasted good. They're just hotter than usual that we're used to. Yeah, sauteing peppers, especially like the hot ones that have been brined. Those are, that's, that's like playing with pepper spray. Like on in, in a cooking setting. Because yeah. like if you get right on top of it, it you can really hurt your eyes. All rustic traditions, their dogs like ours. They, they eat, eat everything. everything. Yeah, they that's do. true. Yeah. yeah. Mine eat some not so fantastic things outside. Yeah. And that some I clothing hold. too. Uh, different things. It eats. Yeah. 
everything, everything, yeah, everything. Oh, well, Margie, I appreciate the vote of confidence. So maybe I can, if I can keep that positive feeling yeah. going, maybe I'll, I'll tempt deer meat because, like, I with us doing meat chickens and stuff more often now, and the deer our freezer could get pretty full pretty fast, which isn't bad because I think our food system is broken. So I really don't want to depend on anybody to feed me. I want to depend on me to feed me. So yeah, my Amish grandma can so much and she is so good at, Oh, Isaac, oh, you awesome. need to make sure you learn from her. That's such a good, it is such a good um, tool skill. to know, like yeah. a good skill. I remember my grandpa was good. I remember going to his house and he'd have cans of stuff downstairs or he'd lay things out on a table yeah. to dehydrate. Yeah, he was he big would. on that. Yeah, I remember he'd always give us like um, bags of um, apples. Yeah. Apples. I always looked forward to getting those. Yeah. His grandpa was just, his grandpa was amazing. He was, he he was a very good man. He, had, he grew everything. Yeah, he, was just... he did. Meat is easy, but you need a pressure canner. Don't be afraid of it. Okay. Joe Mama and Margie, you guys are my cheerleaders. Yeah. <laughs> so like you're pushing. anytime I feel like I can't do it, I'm going to be like, Joe Mama and Margie said I could do this, yep. so I can do this. You probably won't see videos on it because, or maybe you will. Maybe if it turns into some type of hilarity, maybe you will. I don't know. My chihuahua eats my jalapenos off of, <laughs> what? It's because he's That's a Mexican crazy. dog. Yeah, it's because he's go. from the south of the border. Yeah. He probably has that in his blood where he mm -hmm. likes that. Jalapenos off the plant. Now, I've seen people say, like, my, my dog will eat tomatoes or, or other things, but I haven't seen jalapenos. So our dog didn't eat anything in our garden, but decided to just run through it full speed and knock down, like, all the corn stalks. Our, yeah, so, our big great yeah. pyramid mix. Like, just we would, were out loved there. loved it. Would run up she, and, and she would. You couldn't catch her, and she'd think it was, like, a great game because we'd be like, get out of there. We could not figure out why our corn stalks were kept breaking yeah, off. Yeah, I it looked thought like the coons were doing yeah, it. But there know? were different directions. Yeah, and, and like we were out there. Through. What were we doing? We were doing yeah. something. It was like, <laughs> and like you could just see like the whole row go forward. Mm -hmm. And then here comes June flying out the other side. Yeah, turn like, right around and go right back <laughs> to. Like, I don't know if she liked that pressure like up against yeah. her chest or what. Hey, Pete's. Pete's little homestead. Good to see you, bud. It tastes like beef if you can it. That's huh. not bad. That's not bad at all. I so like. So do you beef. usually add something to season it, or like almost marinate it in there, Margie, or is it just change the flavor a bit when it's in yeah. there? I wonder. Pete, what do you got going on on your homestead, bud? I want to learn Cantu, but it's it is scary, Tasha. And I'm a wimp. Like I will be straight up with you. I'm a wimp when it comes to new things. Probably because I'm a little OCD and a perfectionist, and the thought of failure like horrifies me. You guys can't tell in my videos when I cry a lot when things don't go my way. Um, Isaac, our storeroom all is almost full to the ceiling with canned goods. What? Our storeroom's Seriously? full, but it's actually a totes of stuff we're trying to... I've, I've, last winter, I yeah. redid some of the basement, put up some walls, mm -hmm. and uh, we sort of reorganized, but yeah. we have a ton of storage stuff. It's, it's in, yeah. yeah, it's in the works of, like, being more, like, for canning yeah. and, and storage That's like that. We did put some shelves up and have some yeah. of that stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I got a little overzealous with my garden this year. And I let a lot of things get away from me. So like potatoes, I didn't focus on them. I actually did like an experiment with our feed bags to see if I could grow them in bags. And they did grow like this big. <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 it was a micro garden. You know, people like their micro farms and their micro animals. So I will teach you how to do micro potatoes in feed bags. Okay. But it I, worked. Yeah. It worked. I think if I'd have been a little more like on top of it, then it. And then when they sit on the plate, they look like those fancy restaurants that it have did. the little vegetables. It did. I felt very potato. fancy. I was <laughs> just like drizzling like little Deer sauce tar -tar over it. Instead Piece of, of parsley, yeah. just nicely dressed on top. Yeah, it was, it was nice. No, she's extremely obese. Also, she will eat chocolate and that doesn't, really? Hmm. Man, you know, our um, sister-in-law or his sister, their dog ate chocolate and like convulsed. So it might be different tolerances and different mm -hmm. breeds. I've had dogs too that like got a hold of a whole mess of chocolate and it just nothing. Like they were like, mm -hmm. yeah, there was nothing. That was cool. They liked it, but yeah. I'm, so, I'm scared. We put beef bouillon cube in it. That oh, makes sense. Okay, that idea. makes sense. Huh. OCD is good in canning. You will, ha ha, see? Joe Mama, keep it coming. Keep telling me how I can do this. Not much right now, Pete. Are you just kind of in that fall lull between like big projects or, yeah. or things Playing to in do. the next one. Yeah. I know how that goes. I think we would be in a lull if it wasn't for like breeding and the fact that I can't stop getting new animals yeah. on Then the we farm. got some mechanical stuff going on. Our truck, 
the trailer lights, of course, didn't work. Yeah. Last okay. Time we were working so on it. we have another farm animal coming. Yeah. Or that's already here. You guys just don't know about yeah. it. Some of you that follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know, know. what it is. Yeah. You know what came. But your girl here went hunting on last Thursday on opening day. Posted the video for it today. If you guys haven't seen it, it's great. Lots of footage. I didn't get anything, so nothing was hurt in the process. But I did have a good time out there, and I enjoy being one with nature. But I came home, and it was dark. And I got home. I hadn't eaten yet, so I was real hangry. And Mark's like, you know, we're going to go get that new farm animal tomorrow. We might want to go ahead and hook up the trailer and make sure everything works. And I'm hangry and being non-compliant. Which like, last time we yeah. used it, everything worked. Everything so was fine. So was I figured, like, we should just be able to hook that thing up and go. No. None of the lights on the trailer were, were working. Then the brake light came on on our truck. So here I am in my deer stand the next morning on Facebook. <laughs> Do any of my livestock friends have a trailer that I can borrow? Because my parents have a truck. We know lots of people that have trucks that we could have borrowed. And that worked out fine. But the trailer part there is just not fun. And it was going to be towards like a roads that we weren't used to, across state lines, and towards the part of the day where it was going to be dark. So we really did want like those running lights and at least brake lights. Yeah, you know, it, what is it? It's Murphy's Law. So if something bad is going to happen, it's going to happen to us. It happens to everybody on homestead. I'm sure it's one of those things where you think you've got a certain set of tools or things that are lined up to do the job and go to use them. And it's like, well, poop, I need this now and it's not yep. working. So that was kind of a big bummer. And the way we sort of work is we buy cheaper stuff. We can pay for it with cash. So sometimes we get into yeah, them, like our like truck, the like the bottom of it's... I mean, it's so rusty. rusty. Yeah, it's a dodge, so, so you can so imagine. So do you even, like, start working on it? I had to take, like, a wire brush and scrape off rust. <laughs> like you would for and, an old uh, grill, like. Yeah. <laughs> so spray paint it some to try to make it look a little nicer next time. And then uh, spray the wiring paint makes is it a look mess. Good, right? I mean, there's. Oh, the wiring I think at was... one time it had, like, a salt sprayer on the back or something because there's all these extra wires. It was bad. And, and like, we plug them in and they do odd things all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, he's right? other there like, fucking, he's like, what's this doing? I'm like, it's doing yeah. this. He's like, yeah. that's not what it's supposed yeah. to do. I'm like... I just wish it was like Kip. Like, it would just start telling me what's wrong or what's happening. So I don't have <laughs> we to, have like the Night I've got Rider the bolt meter. Trucks. I got all this stuff. I'm trying to figure <laughs> we have it out. like it's the Night Rider there, trucks. But... That's hilarious. But that's why it works sometimes, so... Oh, Keeps rustic traditions. You did feedback potatoes too and they were tiny. It's not just me. There that's awesome. Why were they tiny? Do you have any, like... Thoughts on that? Is it because of the compressed space of the bag or maybe like too tightly packed dirt in the, the feed bag that causes them not to? Because I know like they like loose, moist soil. I used to magic potatoes. I know. Yeah, or we just... <laughs> Mine were store potatoes. And yeah. someone's like, you shouldn't have used store potatoes. I'm like, ah, uh, YouTube will tell you differently because everything I've looked at yeah. for years says like, hey, put them in the dark. When they start to um, root out, that's when you cut them up and put them in a bag. So... Yeah. Okay. So what else we got going on here? Um, Tasha, it's poisonous to dogs. This is why I like you. I also have OCD too. My little <laughs> buck is already... <gasps> Girl, man, I just had to get rid of my blue-eyed buck. Yep. I wanted blue-eyed babies, but the he's like trying to keep a horny little hamster in. Yeah. I could not keep him in the out. fence. And his small father, holes too, yeah, he right would there. find like the smallest holes where I'm like, how are you going through this? At one point, weaving through a gate and a panel. Yeah. It was like a snake trying yeah. to keep it in. It was over there just kind okay. of like, but I had doze in heat, so I totally get why he was doing that. And I'm like, good, you have the drive, but yeah. could you wait 30 days? <laughs> well, we did get a good message today. He's happy yeah, his new Yeah, he's home, really so. happy in his new home. It's always home. nice getting those. You guys will kind of see that too. That's an upcoming mm -hmm. episode. I always get real weird about like giving my bucks away. Not giving, because I definitely didn't give him away. <laughs> he, I, <laughs> no, he, he was a, he's from Register Stock with a fantastic buck. But I just had too many girls that were thirsty, and he was thirsty too. And I was afraid mm -hmm. he was going to be like his daddy and get in there and breed everybody. But he's got like ants, half ants, grand dams, sisters, half sisters in there where I'm like. Ooh. And I work from home and one day he got out and I looked. He had them all lined up. Yeah. All the girls. The girls the were. And he was sweet and talking. Yeah. Every one of them. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. That, right <laughs> yeah, that, that blubber tongue <laughs> they get. It's, it's he crazy. He thought he was hot stuff. It was crazy. <clears throat> 
Oh, Joe Mama, I know you were cheering for those deer. <clears throat> and and trust me, like when I do have one, if mm -hmm. I if I harvest, I will have big like warnings so mm -hmm. that anybody who is sensitive to that does has like a fair warning not to watch it because I do know that that is like a very polarizing subject for mm -hmm. some people, and I totally respect that, and I'll make sure that everybody has a warning before yeah. that that hits. And deer are cool to watch. Uh, they I've are, and so that's why I posted it. Many times we've watched them go through just because. Just watching their behavior neat. is just so Creatures. Yeah. relaxing, and like that doe that was blowing up a storm at me, like she was blowing way before she ever got to me, so she was on high alert anyways. But you know, she blew at me, but in her defense, like I was going to draw on her. That was mm -hmm. a mature doe that could have helped feed us through the winter so yeah and then she made everybody coming behind her very aware and yeah. they're good at that they're they're really good at that and touche you know mother nature does a great job making sure that we have obstacles where it's not just easy pickings because it's not easy pickings out there at all i mean they move like ghosts yeah they really do but i like that too because then like i have an excuse to like watch them and not even move so yeah, so my friend says it's Tasha Law. What can go wrong? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we have Tasha. a family member, and when stuff starts struggling and stuff, she's they always like, like hardship. Yeah. They, they're like, it's hardship, hardship acres. acres right yeah. now. She's like, oh, so, welcome to hardship yeah. acres. And like, we all have those moments. It's like, we do. it's almost bad enough. Sometimes you're like, I'm done. I'm done. We're going to quit. Let's just go almost like, buy a house with no <laughs> land and just live in a little I don't know how many times a week <laughs> we're like, let's just go move in a suburb yeah. and just be a normal, un sounds un nice. no sounds easy. normal people. Yeah. Um, this is normal to me. So mm -hmm. people that live in different settings, it's not normal. Yeah. But we I think while I it. would very much appreciate having a break every now and then, which we do give ourselves breaks. This year's just been really weird with everything going on. Yeah. Um, I would miss it. And I don't like neighbors. Yeah. I like them, but just not close to me. Yeah, <laughs> so, like the privacy. Yeah, I, I really do appreciate my father's privacy. So rustic. I have no idea I did what other people did. But yeah, sometimes... Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, no trench, maybe yet, we'll huh? do trench... Buried um, potatoes, maybe do the trench method next year. Tiny potatoes with string beans are so delicious. It really great. was good. Like, I pressure mm -hmm. cooked it with, was it deer? Was it a, yeah. sh a shoulder of deer, a mm -hmm. shoulder of venison? And they were very different texture when they're small like that, but it was good. It was good flavor. The string beans. My grandpa was like string, yeah, string beans. beans. That's so good. How many guineas do you have by now? Oh, Isaac. <laughs> oh, Isaac. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question right now. Ask the hawk. Yeah. yeah. Ask the, the huge eagle-sized red tail hawk that we have. Oh, and the owls. Yeah. I'm sure the owls. And we had that one underground, which was a coon, right? Remember? Yeah, it was a coon. We, so, we had a possum this week. Apparently, the guineas brought in every predator mm -hmm. around. Because honestly, the hawk, we haven't seen we it haven't since. We haven't seen then. the hawk since. It's it, like the hawk was like, those birds are delicious. Guineas, I guess, yeah. yeah. And they were young. It's like it's Burger King or something. So, like, I don't think they really had that really good instinct to be up and aware. Yeah. I think because they were young that they, they just didn't stand a chance. We're going to try them again. I we are. Like having them around. I think I want to try in the spring. Mm -hmm. So, not in the winter. I don't need anything else pooping and going everywhere. <laughs> My barn and everywhere else. Creeping Indigo. Creeping Indigo has taken over our whole property. So, oh, all no. grazing animals. <gasps> are you serious, Rustic? Man. That sounds rough. Really? That is crazy. Have you had problems with that in prior years? Good for you, though, like, being responsible yeah. and being, like, as much as you'd like to keep them for their own safety, is they have to Is something like you could, like, keep, like, mowing and maybe kill it off? Or well, is it, if it's a like, vine, vines yeah. get super happy when yeah, they get mowed. Some they go of them psychotic. Do. Man, that sucks. <sighs> Hopefully you guys get that wrapped up and under control because... Yeah. Tasha, your buck is a beautiful buck. I'm really glad that you tagged me in Facebook to show me how beautiful he was. He's going to give you beautiful babies. I'm, I'm excited for you. I can't wait to see them. All right, Joe Mama, thanks for stopping in. Yeah, yeah. If you pressure cook food, you can can Stay foods. in touch with your canning. All right, yeah, yeah. I, might be, I might be touching base with you. Joe Mama, help me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know, Isaac. It was a big whoops. <laughs> it was, uh, and like, we, we would watch for the hawk. And I chased him several times yeah. once off of the Our game. dog was even trained. Like, oh, she'd yeah. go out looking for him and chase yeah, him. Yeah, she immediately would come like out with that her head up. It was, it was crazy, yeah. like, the instincts that she had. So we, we were really happy. It's funny because we have ospreys in the 
area too, and we'd see them chase them off every yeah, now and then. Yeah, they bother our hawks, they're but tra- they're more like a fish. Mm-hmm. They prey more they on fish. They don't really. Um, They've been here for years since yeah. we moved out. They don't like the the um, ground mammals in the area or birds. They, I've yeah. never seen them. Yeah, now, I've we're seen near them with a, snakes. Yeah, but mostly they they prey upon fish. And that's because we're near a big lake. Like there's a big recreational lake nearby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they they have not yeah. honestly they're close enough where they can fly over there. Well, and a lot of people out here have their right own there. ponds, like yeah. larger ponds. So that does not surprise me. Yeah. Guineas, Guineas are, are really stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we found that out. Yeah. Yeah, We've someone's like, they'll be stories. able to tell you when things are around. But I'm, I'm guessing, like, as long as one had their head up. But I don't, mm-hmm. they probably never had their head up. Or I don't know. Or stick up their suburbs are too boring for me. Yeah, they are boring. I think we'd find the same if we were there. Well, people are nosy, and I, I dislike people. What, people are nosy, but I'm a YouTuber on YouTube sharing all of my business to, the, to whoever wants to see it. But that's on my terms, you know, so... Um, most people I've talked to that live in, in suburbs, the, the issues that they that they talk to me about, I'm like, I can't even fathom that because I'm a hillbilly. Like, I, I don't want to be around people in close proximity to my living quarters. I don't mind being around them at work. Um, we just moved here last year. It's a ground cover that only grazing... Uh, I've heard horror stories about it, so I don't know. We only That's have awful. Well, at least you only have one acre yeah. to manage. I don't know. Maybe they're only grass and can do it. I was going to say, I was hoping maybe there was like a cover crop that you could plant that would like strangle it out. You could fight nature with nature, but it, mm-hmm. that sounds like you probably maybe burning back. Would that help? I, yeah. I have seen people try to do a burning. It's too bad there's not like something that would eat it. Well, that's I mean, that's why poison. it's so rampant, yeah. I'm sure. But there are certain animals that like that can eat poisonous plants that other animals can't. But I'm just probably plant sh- honeysuckle. Honeysuckle <laughs> kills everything right here. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. In Indiana, uh, like honeysuckle so and grapevine oh, is God. is yeah, extremely that's invasive. Our best plant. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. though, goats like it, so we cut the honeysuckle branches to right Yeah, I remember it. that. You told me that it choked to death on a yeah, frog. Yeah, that was Ugh. a funny story. <laughs> uh, wasn't that the one? I think it, didn't she say her husband? Your husband tried to do CPR to. Bring it back or Bless something like that. Bless his heart. Yeah. I can just... Tried to save that guinea. Uh, don't worry. Ashley would have done the same thing. I would have. Yeah. She, she said the hawk off a of one, but it was already It was gone. already dead, yeah. but I was hoping like maybe he maybe had just stunned just, it. Yeah. But Boy, he she screamed at me. That hawk yeah. was mad. He was mad. I don't like most people. That, you and me both, Russ, that yeah. cool. We're just... I can I can get a makes us like you then yeah you don't exactly like I like people that don't like people yeah, that's so. why we don't bother you don't bother us we'll get there. Well, I like at work at I work in a university haha ha. um but I deal with a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life everything from like students to um, professors to project managers engineers architects vendors contractors I deal with just about anybody that is on that campus. And by the end of the day, I feel sorry for him because, like, I put on that, like, I can take it all and I can I can be happy and help you. And then by the time I get home, I'm just like, nobody talk to me. I need about 30 minutes of silence where I'm not trying to, like, pull up my personality to um, be more appealing to the people that I'm working around. Because the customer is always right, right? Sometimes. Sometimes it depends. I once heard one of my um, managers when I was working in retail, he said, some customers need to be fired. Because we were, we had a very, um, I, it was a very near violent altercation with a customer that was really upset over a return. And um, he didn't appease her. She said the customer was always right and then like stormed out of, the, out of the store. And he's like, some customers really just need to be fired. And I was, I was cool. It's because she wanted me to touch her toilet seat. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I worked at Home Depot as a cashier, and this lady brought back a toilet seat. No joke. That had been used. Visually, you could tell that it had been used. And when I went to go get the hazmat material, she was deeply offended. Deeply offended. And asked why I had to do that. I'm like, well, this has been on your toilet. I don't know if you're aware of what you do on a toilet. But I don't want my hands coming. No matter how much you say that you've cleaned this, I cannot, I I can't. And other people are going to be handling this. So I had to get, like, the hazmat stuff. And she was really upset. Wanted my manager. And I got my manager. And my manager backed me yeah. up. Because nobody wants to touch no poopy seat. No. I mean, come on. It's crazy. People are just, people are really, really crazy. 
Okay, that is exactly what we want to move to the mountains and have no neighbors. <laughs> We're on eight acres, but have neighbors, and it's just always something with them. Yeah. Even with eight acres, you know, that's the crazy thing. Like, well, we have our 13, and, like, my farmer next door thought he was helping me mow down all my pollinator yeah. plants. He has left it alone, though. Yeah. Like, once I put up the posts and the wire and, like, the and things like... honestly, I, most of our yeah, neighbors here have been they, very they, friendly. They we, have been very, very friendly. And, Especially when so. we all went into quarantine. Like, we went up with our rounds, like, giving eggs out and, like, mm -hmm. touching base. Especially with, like, more of our elderly neighbors letting them know, like, hey, if you need anything, let us know. You yeah. know, like, I know we stay over here and we play with goats all day long. But if you need anything, we're here. Yeah. So... <laughs> I don't know how they felt about it, but they all seem very receptive and they're all, they, they're all really nice from what the interactions that we've had, but they're all country people that they probably also don't like people. Yeah, so they're yeah. probably just happy that like we're space checking too. in. So rustic, I'm not sure about burning. It is one of the few plants that is deadly to anything mm. that it eats it. I think a pound is all it takes to kill a horse. <gasps> yeah, that is an awful weed. You know, I've heard Florida has some gnarly plants down there. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, it's not creeping indigo. It's something else, like um, an invasive from Asia. That do you know what I'm talking oh. about? Like the zinc, not zinca. Zinc Probably some my plant no seeds in it's in it over. <laughs> All those yeah, crazy those seeds would be more that were coming invasive. from China. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure those are invasive too. Yeah, man. Anybody on plant forum saw that that stuff came through? Like yeah, that, that was, was like violent arguments. Yeah, my mom actually got. It. Yeah, she got it twice. Yeah, she got it twice. She, she sent it. Twice. Um, the local university. Yeah. What was it? Was um, it for Purdue? Indiana, Purdue yeah. is like the leading agricultural university here in Indiana. It does a lot of the 4-H stuff. They yeah. requested that if we had gotten seeds like that, to so please she send, send it them to up them. there to so. research. So, so that's what she did, found, which was cool. Yeah. I was trying hardest to say. Oh. No. It tasted good though. Hey, at least you used it. Yeah. You put it to um, its fullest use, and that's all we Actually, can ask for. you got for. like a mixed meal there. You got guinea and frog legs. Yeah. Did you use the frog? <laughs> or did he try to go legs first, where, and that's where, why where it did, choked? We, we tried frog legs, right? Down in Florida, I thought. They had like a seafood bar. I'm in Oh. You eat octopus. I eat really octopus. Like, like yeah, so it, I love octopus, but for some reason, frog legs. They were breaded, like, so it didn't matter anyway. Yeah. So. I think we did because they were breaded. I could mm -hmm. kind of get past it. But I can eat like a full on octopus tentacle on a plate like with weird sauces drizzled on it because I like feeling fancy every once yeah. in a while. And everybody else around me was like, ew. So like. <laughs> the mountains are calling my name. Yep, we're here. Yeah. We got an upcoming vacation down in Tennessee. Yeah, we do have a vacation Tennessee. coming soon. And it's funny because like, I think it was Tasha mentioned like getting up in the mountains away from people. So we'll spend some time down in like the Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg area where mm -hmm. it's all touristy. But we eventually get that bug where we're like, okay, we need away from people and we'll drive up in the mountains just yeah. to get away from everything. Yeah. And, oh, in Rustic, and yeah, we have it. a Miami here. It's in Miami, Oxford, Ohio. I get calls from Miami yeah. University for Florida all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they ask me for people and I'm like, that is not in our directory. Like, I don't know who you're trying to talk to. And then like, they'll be like, this is the address and I'll Google the address. And I'm like, oh my yeah. dear, <laughs> that's Florida. That's Florida. I would like to live in Florida. Um, I know quite a few people that have lived down there. Probably not right now. Um, if you're in Florida, Rustic, like, how's the weather down there for you guys? Right now, yeah, I heard um, Delta, Delta was was getting ready to make landfall. Yeah. That storm surge looked bad for that one, too. Your neighbors are jerks, Margie. You give me their names and their addresses. <laughs> I'll send down. them hate mail. Be like, don't you mess with my Margie. <laughs> Margie's a cool gal. I'm not eating frogs. Squid is okay, but no. Yes, Rustic. <laughs> yes. Frogs are completely fine. Oh, hey, Owl Creek. Hey, Cody. How you doing? Hey, congrats on your big sub, by the way. That is, that, that's pretty cool. So anybody that's not familiar with um, Cody over at Owl Creek, um, keeping it Dutch, just sub to his channel. So that's cool. That's really, really cool. Florida sucks. It's hot. Florida here sucks. <laughs> he would agree. He would agree because he... He runs hot blood and yeah. he does not. I can what, give him us the winner without coat. Yeah. He, and him and my daughter. Honestly, my brother was just yeah, down there for you, a few months, too. decided to visit yeah. down there and actually live down there and try it out. And he You're said the same water. thing. Yeah, he works out in like a, a truck Josh shop uh, as a mechanic. And uh, he was talking about how the shop was always hot and humid. Yeah. And like it was killing him. Like the other guys were just like, no big deal, you know. Yeah. But Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. The one crazy thing he sent us though was remember that. He had like this, they had yeah. this beehive that was Yeah, they huge. had a honey beehive yeah. like in their parking lot and it actually in fell tree. on someone's car and damaged yeah. it. 
how much they say they got out of that beehive? Uh, it was a like couple five gallon buckets in, like, Everybody looks at like bees and I automatically picture like Winnie the Pooh reaching his hand mm -hmm. into like the beehives, but they do not really look like that in the wild. Like they look like comb if they're mm -hmm. exposed and they're not like this up in was a tree. completely exposed. This one was completely exposed. Which... And he said he got like what? 50 gallons of honey? Was it 50? I don't know if it was 50, but it was, it it was, was a like lot. it was somewhere between yeah. 30 and 50. It was a huge he, he said yeah, he had a picture. I mean, it, it, it was... damaged the car. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> Not to mention all the bee swarms, you know, around his car then after that well, point. Wasn't there so it was a dead happen. squirrel? It said that there was a squirrel that was trying to get into the honey yeah. and the bee stung it to death. They yeah, said there was so a dead that. squirrel there too. Well, yeah. that's all stipulation. They're proven, yeah. they're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. So they may or may not have killed the squirrel. That may have been what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, cool down in January maybe. Like what's cool down there though, yeah. Rustic? I mean, give me, give me... What and here lately, is. our cool downs have been pretty gnarly because we've had a couple like Arctic yeah. swings from the north. Yeah. And uh, was it last year? Again? I don't know if it got We didn't have an Arctic like, vortex last year, but, but the, the year one, before oh, that, man, we were still brutal. birthing goats yeah. in January. It was. I remember awful. them having ice like on their. They had ice body, on their like, ears. Like yeah. we were having to like make sure their Constantly. ears didn't frostbite. We just brought them in at some points because yeah. it was just so bad. Yeah. Like it was well, it was bad on us too because, like, I remember we would have does where it's like, <laughs> Oh my god, can you just yeah. push? Like, just we were huddled push. up together in a barn in yeah. the corner, just trying to stay warm. Find us out there all mummified through it. <laughs> Actually, small, but my husband threw it in the panic of CPR. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. <laughs> oh, I only have half an acre. If I had more, I would get the stinkiest animals to raise. <laughs> Margie, Margie, <laughs> I love that. So like hogs, like super. I don't know. Bucks like, can be bucks, pretty bad. Some say, people can't some, stand the smell of them. Real horny goats out being there. Being raised around yeah. them, and I, I know her being around hey, them now. Ed's she, attention to detail. She mentioned how bad they stink when we first hey, got Wonderland. them, but you get used to them. You do, so and like it becomes normal. They. They, they love Except when me, you like so... go out and touch them, or like she had to well, catch them the before thing. work. Like, they love me. And they want to like rub on me, and it's like Where's I go she... nose blind. But then like I'll go to work, and they'll be like, "What is, what is yeah. that smell?" Yeah. I'm like, "It's perfume for a dental." Yeah, I was yeah. like, "Well, my nose really like me, but yeah." Ed's attention it's... to detail. Hello, yeah. hey Ed, reaching out. Wonderland. I'm glad you're here. Sixty to seventy is a cool down. Well, yeah, I could nice. live in that temperature year round. Yep. Yeah. You can't stay long, but wanted to wave before you had a... Are you, are you in the middle of harvest, Wonderland? Because I think you should make some harvest videos. That would be cool. I like to watch um, Sandy Brock over at Sheepishly Me. She does, like, sheep raising and handling along with farming. And, like, I really enjoy watching her hay making and her harvest videos. It's relaxing for me. So, relax me, Wonderland. Relax me. Okay, sometimes we do get down to the 30s, but it doesn't last long. The wind chill is painful, like needles. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that, well, if if, you, if you're cool with 60 to 70, mm -hmm. and then you did get 30s, yeah, that would feel like the Arctic vortex does appear every now and then when it swings down into Indiana. Because there have been times where it's like, what well, it wasn't last year, it was the year before that, that we did get it, because like... We were told not to go outside without like glasses and eye protection and everything because I had to batten down the hatches in the barn and get everybody ready and bedded down mm -hmm. because it was going to get really cold. There's and I remember my hair. eyelids were trying to freeze together. I kept having to try to walk around like this. Yeah. Every time I blinked, you could feel it trying to. And I having facial hair, I'd have icicles just drip over yeah, my Yeah, but they're snot sickles. Yeah. Like that's the bad. It they're not ice. It was humidity it from. Not, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Runny noses yeah. mean snot sickles. Yeah. Means... It's too cold to even have a runny nose. It just. <laughs> you're making my nose feel runny yeah. just thinking about that. <laughs> but you can feel it when you breathe in, like your your sinuses. You can feel the ice like. Oh yeah, you second. can it's definitely. Weird. What's that called? Owl Creek. Uh, our Nigerian bucks smelled horrible, way worse than our Kiko bucks. I'd have to agree. We've had boar bucks, and they they don't touch it. Mm. They like to pee on themselves a lot more than other goats. Yeah. And they're I think because they're little, they're like a lot more bendy because like they get it in places where I'm like, how, how. Yeah, we had a white one, and like he was yellow. yellow. He's yeah. yellow. He's not yeah. white anymore. The funny thing is, he had like a, like an emo haircut, like it hung over his face. <laughs> By so it was like dyed yellow. Like it looked like he was intending for the dye his hair, which looked funny. Remember, Wolfie? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, and we'll feel like <laughs> I swear, to... like each each one yeah. of our bucks that we had, like at one point, each had like a different phase of hairstyle. Mm -hmm. So like Wolfie was our youngest one, and he had like this hair that would come up and yeah. over in his eyes, and yeah. I'm like, this is the teenager going through his emo phase. Yeah. It then we like had it. Lego who had like the buzz cut, mm -hmm. like kind of like a little like stylish yeah. looking, and then you have Poseidon who's ten, where it's like just. Bald. Yeah. But then has a huge beard. <laughs> he did. He, like he the, looks very All wise. their haircuts and the way they look fit their yeah, personalities. Yeah, super wise. Funny. Majestic yeah. even, some might say. So. Yeah. <laughs> Joe yeah. like that. Yeah. Joe's over here laughing. <laughs> Marcus, yes, he dumped the combine head. Oh, oh no, no, that sounds miserable. No wonder Wonderland had to work, had to bolt. That yep. sounds terrible. Uh, emergency run there. We... We don't have, okay, rub it in rustic, okay? Just rub it in. We don't have warm weather clothes. No. I only have flip-flops. Well, that just sounds downright awful. <laughs> now, she has flip-flops. She tries to wear them out there and then gets upset when the goats step on her toes. Yeah, because I'm like, why do we With not have, know about house. personal yeah. space? Do you yeah. not see that I don't have shoes, closed-toed so, shoes we, on? We have flip-flops. It's just hard to wear them. Well, if you want to keep clean feet or if you don't want to get stepped on... Mm. got any deer with that bow yet i have not gotten anything i haven't been able to go out since mm -hmm. i filmed and my compound bow is having some technical, technical issues yeah. right now so i was out practicing the other day and my knock loop on my compound bow i was like man this looks a little rough you know so I, <laughs> it's always when you like make a mental note like i might need to replace that i went and knocked an arrow and was pulling it back and it just frayed and split, not all the way through, but like enough where it sent enough of a tremor through to my release where I lost an arrow. <laughs> it's somewhere way out in the woods. Like, I got it on film so you guys will see it because I'm like, what in the actual just happened here? Like, and the weird thing is, like, we actually have, like, a bow shop nearby. Yeah. And yeah. there's a shortage on, like, he can't get arrows Yeah, on. I he walked in, and he's like, what spine do you need? And the mm. arrows for, like, that scarce. I bought there yeah. are gold tip arrows, and it was a 500 spine. He's like, yeah, I don't have any. And I thought he was joking at first. I almost laughed, like, aha, Oscar, like, really, where are your arrows at? He's like, no. He's like, like, a lot of things these you cannot find and i had a hard time like we went up to dunham's which is like a sporting goods store in our area i don't know um for some of you that aren't in our area it's midwest based is it midwest based so i had a hard time there finding the right arrows and a lot of them are like already preset to accept field points and broadheads but they're like they don't have like all the different mm -hmm. sizes so they weren't set like cut to my draw length so I got all... So another thing yeah. that's impacted by everything going on. Because yeah, he said, like, there's been, like, a lot more yeah. people visiting than usual. Well, so. they realize how broken our food system is. Yeah. When you all of a sudden realize you can't rely on the grocery store to have beef, you yeah. you start trying to figure out where am I going to get my red meat from and yeah. other nature offers a lot. Similar thing, like she's mentioned, I follow firearm stuff closely, and, and there's, like, a shortage, not just on ammo. Ammo prices have gone through the roof, and people mm -hmm. reach out to me and talking about and stuff. But also reload and the components like you can't even find the stuff can't to find them. It's, and that it's like downstream stuff like where the materials to even build the components because of COVID those are out of whack and then just people yeah you know buying and hoarding and well, stuff like, that even causes, like the broadhead so it's like just, it made sense because everything's the, impacted yeah so like because like the arrows are in short supply yeah the broadheads are in short supply the knocks are in short supply I actually had like a knock on my arrow that I destroyed because i had shot i had shot too close to it I shot too good and i say that until i get out there and make a complete jerk of myself not making a good shot and i i, I almost can't replace those components because they're just too hard to find now i did luck out and found like the last box of arrows that i could use but i still have to go get them cut um i i have a couple of maintenance things i need to do on my bow too to make it really fit me because I feel like I'm 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 way stretched out I shouldn't be as stretched out as I am um but that's neither here nor there so I he's got a crossbow that I'm going to try to break out tomorrow and get familiar with I've shot it before and it's not my weapon of choice however the freezer will need to be filled at some point so I can't really be picky with what I'm harvesting with 
I have not been deer hunting since taking one with my car a couple years ago. Oh, Ed. <laughs> she <laughs> Ed. had a similar case not too long ago, too. Her last car yeah, my, ended oh, up totally. Oh, my Ford good. Focus. I was so upset yeah. about that. So we've been there. They, they're they good for running out in front of cars and just stopping and staring. Which hers did. Yeah. I look forward to more hunting videos. Good luck and stay safe. Yeah, hopefully there's a successful hunting video. I, I really am up, hoping. So. Um, yep. We'll see. I it, mean, even got started prepping. That's me. I'm a yeah. procrastinator when that happens. Yeah, like, well, even in, like, my preparing, I didn't start shooting till like, a week or two before bow season, and that is, like, a huge no-no. Yeah. But in the past, I shot a lot. And it is like riding a bike. You just have to wake your muscle memory mm -hmm. back up. But I'm finding that those muscles that are important components for actually pulling back a bow and holding it for extended amounts of time, because people see movies and they're like, oh, you just pull back and go. Deer are very perceptive creatures, they will catch the smallest movement. Like, really, for the doe in my latest video, I should have already been pulled back. Mm -hmm. I was just being lazy. That's my own fault. And she caught me just taking a step back to widen my stance so I could draw. So, in her defense, she made a lot of, of ruckus, but I, I intended to harvest her. So, she can. she's entitled to making her ruckus. Here in Pennsylvania, I had to unpack the winter clothes already, and tomorrow is going to be close to 80. What a year of crazy. It has Yeah, been. it has. But look at everything that's coming up from the south. Like, all these hurricanes yeah. that this record-breaking year for hurricanes. Like, it's no wonder our our um, weather across the country is just, like, doing this roller coaster yeah. right now. And so, it's funny with that hurricane. It looks like we're going to get rain from it. Mm -hmm. But all the fields now are just going... Getting They're harvested. harvested. They're like harvested. Like the field next to yeah. ours is always late, what, October? It's his last field yeah. that he plants. And it was he harvested, harvested today. it yesterday. Or, yeah. yeah, today he, was, he plowed yeah, it yesterday. Yeah, he was plowing he today. Yeah. I think he's, he's doing turning. a cover crop. Yeah. But Which was amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. It, it re This year has just been really different. And our leaves here, oh my gosh, guys, the leaves in Indiana and Ohio right now yeah. are just gorgeous. They're so beautiful. Um, North Carolina has been 80s and dropped to 50s. Yeah, that's kind of mm -hmm. where we're at too, Tasha, this yeah. week. So our we're not too far off of that. I never would have thought about archery equipment having a short... Dude, me too. Like, I went... Like, see, I thought he was joking yeah. with me. Like, I, I half laughed at him and then he looked up But then at we me. looked at his <laughs> stock and it was bare, pretty bare. It was bare. And then even going to, like she said, Dunham's, they didn't have a big selection mm -mm. either. Like, no. had a lot, a lot of empty stuff. No, so. I was like, Really? Which yeah. frightens me because mm -hmm. ethical bow, and I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that I've never made a bad shot with a bow. I absolutely have. And every hunter will always make a bad shot at some point in their time in the tree stand or field. It's just, we're human. We are not perfect. We make mistakes. We have adrenaline. Things just sometimes don't go right. You and mean like a tree with an arrow sticking out of it in front of the you stand? You have to talk about that yeah. on here. Yeah, I have to bring I got it up because it's, it's in front of my it's in front of my stand, so I stare at it every time. But she was like sort of tracing it through. Yeah, he was walking, yeah. which don't take a shot on a moving deer. This was when I was it younger was was and he slow. was slow, but like I followed him and yeah, like I probably like at the last moment and it hit a tree. So Mark gets to see it every time he's in his yeah. stand. Yeah, there's an arrow like right now. Yeah, every level. time I walk by, he's like, What's that up in that tree? Like, <laughs> yeah. you're so yeah. funny. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. It's a joke that punchline never dies. Yeah, I think I've missed something in this chat, and I don't want to miss you guys are, are having to... Hey, Farmstead! A deer ran into my husband's car while he was stopped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. That's awful. She they got have a ticket that for weird... jaywalking. Yeah. Yeah. We so, need a blizzard? No, nah, I don't know if we need a blizzard. I don't know well, if and seeing, like, rustic, <laughs> like, with that learning to shoot, that's where I was going with all those new bow hunters... You actually have, there's a lot more components to it. It's, it's very physical, especially with like a compound or a recurve. So if you haven't practiced a lot and you've gone out there, that's a lot of wounded deer that probably won't be recovered. Now, mother nature with her ample supply of predators and scavengers will be very thankful. And while I'm, I don't approve of unethical shots, everybody takes them at some point, may, meaning to or not meaning to, and hopefully they learn from it. It still manages the deer herd, but not in a positive way where it's productive and we're managing the herd and taking something from it. It's almost, it's kind of wasteful in my, in my opinion. And I don't know. I, I have a lot of mixed feelings about that. That's when I'm like, make sure that you know what you're doing before you get out there. But this year I just know we, 
I hunt with my neighbor behind me whose stand faces my stand and will openly shoot a firearm at firearm season up towards my stand, knowing I'm in it with my blaze orange. So I can't really count on everybody being ethical and safe and, and educated about it. <sighs> Rant on bow hunting over. <laughs> oh, goodness. Next session. Next session, moving on to the next topic. These beat up trees, we do. Oh, you know what? That's right, because you guys get your 60 and 70s as low. You guys probably don't get um, leaves changes down there in Florida, Rustic. Oh my gosh. Kind of like two trophies in <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Yay, Farm said, I'm glad you made it. I enjoyed your live, what I got to see of it earlier. You knocked it out of the park. I appreciated learning about the shorts. I went out and while I was hugging animals and then being ridiculous, I decided to start filming for shorts. So thank you for helping me not be a wimp about the new things. That's awesome. Okay, it would probably, it's not redundant because like I blabber and I never stay on um, topic farmsness. So farmsness said I would probs be redundant for this here, but what are you afraid of trying to try with YouTube? We're talking try new things. So like the shorts, that's a really good, and it's just because like, they're new. Like you were saying in your life, they're in, in beta. So there's a lot of examples out there and there's a lot of people that are hitting it like at the right time. But I don't know, I'm always afraid of being received in a not positive way. I don't wanna be received in a not positive way. And mostly because like, if I don't like something or I don't have something positive or kind to say, I just scroll. It's very rare for me to like engage, but this whole YouTube thing has kind of showed me that there are a lot of people that feel empowered and will engage in like a negative way. And there are too many people out there that struggle with like complexes or um, fears like that, that nobody, I mean, I face it day to day. I don't need someone telling me how wrong my lifestyle is or how they don't agree with it. Or if I'm taking terrible care of my animals, I had one person like rip me up one side and down the other. Cause I was treating for everything under the sun. Like, well, my vet told me that's what I should be doing. I shadowed a vet for years. I kind of, I feel like I know what I'm talking about. Gun season is what scares me this year. A lot of, yeah, I'm telling you, Cody, it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be interesting. Totally so if anybody is going to be out in the woods this year, like even just foraging and it is firearm season, blaze orange, mm -hmm. blaze orange and talk loudly. Don't just make noises because we have people here that we've had conversations with that said, I took a good sound shot. And upon further conversation, a good sound shot meant I heard, heard something in the, I heard something Not in like the bushes. Sound so I shot. fired into the bush. Yeah. It was a good sound shot. He heard, so he shot in that direction, which Craziness. please don't do that, guys. Like, please don't do that. No, that's all. Bows look so complicated, so I had to learn a whole lot before even thinking about shooting it. Yeah. They are, but you know how like I'm scared of canning and everybody's like, hey, just do it because if you're OCD or you, you do the directions and you do your research, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine. Everybody starts somewhere. Um, don't be afraid to be, because I'm speaking from experience, as a female bow hunter, I have like a complex where I need to be able to pull back the heaviest weight I can Sorry. And sometimes that means I can't hold that weight even with like um, a drop off point where the weight comes off after you've pulled the bow back to a certain point. It has like a weight drop off like of like 20% a let off, in yeah. some, but yeah, a let off when you hit like a certain wall and it makes me a less accurate shooter. So don't be afraid to be like, you know, I can pull 75 pounds back but let's stick with like 55 because that's, that's more than Especially enough. when you have all your hunting gear on too. Yeah. Like it, or you've been cold, cold for the yeah. whole morning and your muscles are cold. And then you all of a sudden stand up and try to do like this massive pull. And you're like, oh, I have four layers of clothes on and it's cold and I'm cold. Yeah, so. And that's one reason I switched to a crossbow <laughs> just because mm -hmm. I wasn't finding enough time to go out and practice. Mm -hmm. It's something where repetition helps you tremendously. Your muscle memory. Thing. Yeah. You build and, that muscle and memory. learning the habits of pulling it back and anchor points and all that. And I found I wasn't practicing enough to feel confident to go out deer hunting. So that's one reason I switched to a crossbow. But she still likes using a compound bow more. Yeah. 
And you know, like Rustic, you brought up a good point here. Like you, you want to make more videos, but you're afraid of negative people. Mm -hmm. In the very beginning, like it really bothered me. The mm -hmm. fact that I would lose subs, it would be like, I, I would just like go back and rewatch the video and be like, what did I do? Like why, I why were they? I heard it all the time. <laughs> he still hears it. Because yeah, today yeah. I'm like, I'm well, guess what? Release. There was a video, yeah. a hunting video. Guess what? In the first 30 seconds, I lost two subs. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Which I anticipated. But, you know, people, even their negative comments are an interaction and engagement on YouTube. They're not terrible things. And you can choose to respond to them and kill them with kindness. You can be witty or you can just ignore them and not give them what they're wanting from you, which is attention yeah. and conflict. And most of the time I kill with kindness or I don't engage at all because I'm not going to give them what they want from me because I can turn redneck in a heartbeat and I just, I don't want that, especially in writing on a public platform. I, I'm, I don't want that. And like, hey, off -kilter. Our, our, goal, up, our goal was to start it is to, you know, have videos and about, yeah. you know, to look back on really. It wasn't always to be like push the channel as much as we can and everything. I told her, you know, as soon as you lose the joy in it, then maybe we reconsider, do you keep going? But she enjoys doing it. And like I said, mm -hmm. don't want people, you know, weigh you down with their feedback. Yeah. As long as you enjoy it, you're doing it to help us. Our it's daughter can look back years from now and, and see and follow feedback. our adventures. It, so. it's, it, it's just feedback. Mm -hmm. It is not set in stone. Yeah. It's someone's opinion. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with a coworker today. It was based around current events and political events that are going on, which I'm not welcoming into this chat, by the way. So, But we were talking about people's opinions and how people are very... Um, forceful sometimes about voicing their opinion and she's like well how do you even deal with those people like if they're if you know they're wrong I'm like but in their mind you're wrong mm -hmm. you're the opposition I'm like and you're never going to to change someone's real opinion until they're forced into like a life experience that rocks them that really like reaches into them and is like oh yeah that is wrong or oh yeah that that way of thinking is flawed and as much as I want to argue with somebody the opposing side will always find some type of material or fact that fits their narrative, as can I. So we're just butting our heads against a rock wall. So when it comes to like those negative things on YouTube, I just I don't engage because I know anything that I say is not going to change their opinion or their viewpoint. That will have to be something that happens to them in a real life experience that will change that viewpoint. And honestly, if they're going to sit there and, and, and be trolls on a keyboard, then, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they're probably like never going to have a life like experience Tasha to said, change it. They're braver behind a keyboard they really than are. a person. They so, really are. And like I, I told her, in real life, people wouldn't give that opinion on your no. lifestyle. And she really wouldn't care. It's our lifestyle. No. That's the way we live. But on the keyboard, I've had open debates face-to-face -face with people. Like, mm -hmm. well, why do you think that that's wrong? Like, yeah. I, wanna, I genuinely want to know, like, why do you feel like that's wrong? And when you come to somebody kind of like at a, a very anchored point where you're very neutral and disarming because you're neutral, they're more likely to give you like the real facts. And there's not a whole lot of emotion that's pile driving that. And that's when you have real conversations and real exchanges of information. Mm -hmm. And that's when I appreciate them. So anything on here, I'm just like, okay, like you've got to keep going. Someone close to helps lift you up too. I know we bounce off each other. Yeah, so. he does that for me. He's... He's my rock I do it with her sure. YouTube stuff, and she does it with me while my projects are on a farm when I'm ready to throw a hammer or something. She'll come over, <laughs> calm me down, help me with that part of it. Like my truck, I can always my tell. old rusty truck when I'm trying to crawl under it and rust is falling <laughs> in my eyes. I can always tell because, like, he'll be so yeah. quiet, and all of a sudden, like, bang. Yeah. <laughs> like, he threw something, yeah. and he needs to be calm. The funny down. thing was the other night, like, I was in the bathroom, and I'm like, there's black stuff coming out of my eyes. And she, like, panicked and freaked out. And I was like, no, it was it's creepy, like pieces though. Of we rust. had like pieces coming piece out. Pieces of rust. Oh, it's like, <laughs> yeah. It was it was disarming to see that. So, oh, but in writing, you can sculpt your words to be lasered right to the quick. <laughs> I can eviscerate someone in writing, and they walk away thanking me. Haas, can you can you? Okay, your next live. You need to tell me how you do that so I can take notes because, like, I just. He sounds like a Jedi. It does. A this laser. is not the comment section you're looking for. This is for. the way. Toss <laughs> the, the Jedi now. All right, Cody. Thanks for stopping by, bud. I appreciate it. Glad you can yeah. stop by. I hope you do a live soon, Cody. I will, I'll be there if you do it. Yeah. I don't know the rules for bows. Yeah, rules. They're, they're different state to state, really, especially when it comes to hunting. 
Usually Even the, with the like calibers of firearms, a lot broader than the, mm -hmm. uh, firearms. What yeah, we've noticed. Like it ours really is. Is I think what we basically have like a week <laughs> and a half a of firearm <laughs> seasons, but Bose runs from. Was it the end of October? October 1st October until the first 1st, weekend yeah. of January. Yeah. But, like, so. I was talking to somebody in, in Pennsylvania, and they're like, we started on September 19th, mm -hmm. and we run until almost February. Yeah. And I think that might be indicative of the populations in those areas and the amount of insurance claims for deer collisions. Because, mm -hmm. let's be honest, guys, that really does influence sometimes the um, bag limit in your state. Yep. Yep. I'm still here just listening and picking up eggs. <laughs> oh, you pick... What color eggs do you guys have? I know you've got the salmon favorable, so you get like this like lovely little light pink small egg. Like, well, pinkish brown. Pinkish brown is probably a more of a, a good, it's a gift. <laughs> and still sound classy. You know, like that is a gift. Like she said, she can get redneck. So I can, like, well, when, so, so I'm not gonna use any like ill language here or anything, mm -hmm. but like my mom's favorite saying, she's like, don't you let them people make you eat a piece of crap with mm -hmm. a toothpick yeah, and yeah. smile. <laughs> I was like, whoa, or my mom's favorite saying that I have ever heard her say that I still use to this day for someone that I don't like is, um, I wouldn't spit in his rear end hole if his guts were on fire. Yeah, that was a pretty That's good one. Like, she said that and he was standing there and he wasn't free. That what was like yeah. probably within the first month of meeting my parents. Yeah. And he was just like yeah. died laughing a little bit later. <laughs> he though, did, yeah. Thinking about it. At but, the tender age of eighteen yeah. hearing but, that. Yeah. yeah, she has that skill. Mine is I uh she can tell it though. I, I don't really talk like interact back but my facial expressions i just give it he away. will straight up look at you like you're a lunatic yeah that's apparently i don't it even runs realize in I his do family actually his well, dad i'll walk away and ashley's like you didn't believe a word he said that you think he's a re you know <laughs> yeah someone will be really talking to him and he's or, like you know stupid I'm he like, gets yeah. real quick yeah. squinting and gets yeah. real close i'm like yeah. like i said i'm in the farm so people always want to give their knowledge on me with those and i know enough to know when it's not Accurate well, enough, and I say like firearms, especially like gunsmithing or anything like that. There is a hundred one ways to do one thing, mm -hmm. and no way is one hundred percent correct. Now there are some things mm -hmm. that have to be very, very specific and and very accurate, or you've got a hand grenade that you just put into a gun that's up here, and mm -hmm. this is where the bullets are next to your face. But for the most part, like in homesteading, is that way, or even lifestyles where. Just because I do it one way, that's not the only way. And it's definitely not the only mm -hmm. correct way to do it. And I think, so I'm going to kind of jump into like what I've got this as my biggest struggle as a YouTuber is, because I do want to touch on this because I came across a question on a um, homesteading forum where it said, if you could tell, give one sentence of advice to a new homesteader, what would it be? And because I YouTube and am putting portions of my life that in most situations would be very private and intimate and nobody else would know outside of us storytelling as you will at like a bonfire or at church or just like at a social gathering we're really opening it up but so are so many other people so my word of advice was that comparison is the thief of joy even though they're not sharing their life in youtube it is super easy on this path of like self-sufficiency and working the land and whether it's like permaculture or if you're trying to fix a broken um, food system that we currently have here in North America, then it's really hard sometimes to look at what you're doing and completely focus because there's so many things out there on social media right now where it's really easy to look over at someone else's channel or someone else's Facebook page or someone else's Instagram or their TikTok or their shorts or this or that and say, well, what am I doing wrong? You know, like, why did their tomatoes produce all the way until January in the same planting zone and mine didn't? It's really hard for me sometimes to share everything that goes on and not compare it to other, um, other homesteaders because basically we all walk on this, on these different paths, but they ultimately all are going, all, all are going and leading to the same destination. And we all get there a little bit differently and situations and circumstances are different. And some people just have lucky streaks and other people just have really kind of 
focus myself back into what's going on here and looking at all of my good things because it's really easy to look at my success or something that I classify as a success and look at someone else's and it immediately minimalizes it in my mind because it's like, well, this is so small compared to what so-and-so is doing over here. And I don't want to, I don't want to do that because it takes away from like the joy that you feel in anything that you do. I mean, it doesn't have to be homesteading. I mean, for goodness sake, it can be um, comparing yourself to somebody else in a class um, as a college student or as an elementary student. My daughter does it all the time. She's like, well, so-and-so does. I'm like, don't compare yourself to them because their situation and circumstance is different. Everybody, you know, it might look great, but you don't really know what's going on underneath that surface. And it, it's robbing your victory from you. You're not getting the joy from that victory or that success. And you're not celebrating it as fully as you could. You're just kind of like tossing it to the side. Well, it's not as good as somebody else's. And it cheapens that experience. But that experience is what takes you to that next level. And this is me having like a weird devotional. So <laughs> Mark's like, okay. I'm not going to make okay. facial <laughs> Just do it. No, kid. Not yet. I've been, I can see you in the screen. I know. But I and I'm sure he he can probably attest to that that um I'm I'm really bad about comparing myself to other things. And not just like with YouTube, but like at work, um, in social standings, social gatherings. Um, I'm a very competitive person when it comes to sports or anything else. Where I feel like it's a representation of myself. Because I don't want it to be misrepresented or overlooked. Mm. Does that make any sense? It does. Is that blabbering? Is that sense. Friday night, like, too late for me? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of shutting down. Are yeah. you shutting down? <laughs> Guys, no, I mean, Friday up. night. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Friday night it is. Get over my head, maybe. Your mom is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I tell her that. She'd love to hear that. Hey, you got egg colors up there. Right? Ooh, they fell off the chat. egg colors. I, know you like. I do like eight colors because I really want to get some Morans or Marins. I had them before to get those deep, dark brown eggs. Blue, tan spotted, dark brown and light brown. You That's have some rainbow. You, have you to, just need uh, an olive egg now to get some green in there. to color them for uh, Easter. That's all it is. I can get nasty myself for my temple. Which, you know, I'm telling you, Tasha. Is that why that may be crazy on <laughs> in there? Your facial expressions, like beekeeping, so many ways to do it. Mm -hmm. You're right, Farmstead. Like, <laughs> no. I'm, you know, the, like when I commented on, on your video earlier today, like I was feeling it. I'm like, man, these guys are so complex, but they're so simple. Like, I just wish they could like tell me mm -hmm. what's going on, guys. Like what's bothering you? And they're so little, you wouldn't think it would be so complex or they'd have so many different issues that could happen. But it, I don't know. It makes me feel like universally connected to like the small things. I don't know. I'm getting really weird. The later it gets, I'm just getting weird. It's not weird. Oh, thanks, Farmstead. It's, <laughs> I I'm glad it's not weird to somebody. Oh, rustic. I it, I think it's hard, especially like with um, the way that our society kind of leans. It really does push you to compare. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember everything that we put out, like on social media or even just a picture. Everything's filtered, everything's put through the rose glass, and it sometimes isn't quite as it appears. Even like in some of the videos that like we've done, where like from what I've edited, you would not have known like 10 minutes earlier, I was like, well, Mark, I have to get this done. What do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. You know, like you can either do this or we can do this. We can't do both at the same time. But like in the video, we're all like, oh, yeah. you're so great. Only oh, pick out the best material. <laughs> yeah. That puts us in the best light. So. Yeah. I tell people how I would do something, but usually end with you do you, boo, -boo. That sounds like yeah. me, except I never give an answer. Ashley will get upset with me. What I do, because I'm very analytical, is I'll give all my knowledge of the cons and pros yeah. and then just leave and it just at leave that. And just leave it there. I'm like, yeah. but... There's the bad part. Here's the good part. Let's... Thank you for putting those the... on the table, yeah. but I asked you for an yeah. answer. Make my decision yeah. for me. Dang yeah. it. The answer is the one with the least cons, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, as long as you're happy, yeah. that is all that matters, Tasha. Like, really, when it comes down to it, nobody else is responsible for your joy or your happiness. You are. You are in control of that. And I think a lot of people don't really buy into that anymore or think about it. But it's like, no, like, really, you're in control. Like, mm -hmm. words have no power over you if you don't give them power. So...
we're always our worst critic. Yes, we are. I tell you guys, look at his face. See, he cannot hide these facial expressions. He's like, <laughs> like, he is the nicest guy, has like, and I'm going to brag on him and he can give me all the facial expressions that he wants, but he's got like a phenomenal work ethic and he is so hard on himself. Like, I really have to step back and be like, you are saying terrible things about yourself. And that is not the reality. You know, like, from my standpoint on the outside, that is not what this is. You are your own worst critic. You need to cut yourself some, some slack, you know. You have way too many. Yeah, well, we do. We do, Farmstead. I can feel that. Kindred spirits. So, the maybe crazy is because my life is hectic and sometimes... Question my sanity, five kids and all the animals. Yeah, that'll, yeah. Do, that'll do it. That'll do it, Tasha. You have a lot on your plate, too. We were, we were in, in that hive for over an hour. Yeah. I bet you it was hot. Yeah. I bet Ashley's you hot. been that way lately. You've been in and out of that hive. It's coming, bit, guys. Yeah. And prepare for the dramatized, like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Oh, my God, this hive is dying. A lot of so. How much footage we had, like, I hours? I had four of, hours yeah, of, of hive food. inspections. It was yeah. like, 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah. I'm trying to cut it into three episodes and yeah. that's it. Because we just left it running and then yeah. just kept talking and doing all that. And she's like, you won't believe it. We have. We have four. like four hours of footage. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. That's why I hate editing right now. It's killing me. I tried saying <laughs> Kate had no power <laughs> over me, but then I walked. Off kilter. That is so true. Yeah. Cake and words are different though. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh my Apparently those that doesn't work with oh, cake. I love cake it. Cake no, cake, cake is yeah. a that's why I, I am with sweets. Yeah. Spaghetti. There is this little there is like a pizzeria mm -hmm. here in Ohio. It's called La Rosa's, and they have the best freaking spaghetti. Any if I am ever having a bad day, it's never cake. It's never chocolate. Mark's like, well, why don't you just pick up some La Rosa's spaghetti on your way home so I can drown my sorrows in all of my anxieties mm -hmm. in carbs, tomato sauce. And delicious meatballs. So that's kind of just how I I, I medicate myself. That's how we, we band-aid it mm -hmm. <laughs> with pasta. Publix is good, yes. I don't know. I've never been <laughs> to a Publix. Have you never been to a Publix? No. Never been to a Publix. Where's the closest one? Well, they're not in this area. But you say. traveled a lot when you were younger. Yeah, but I mean, I went to a Publix, yeah. so. I'm going to have to educate this boy yeah, when we go. So. When we hit the road. I feel like they're more down south where I've been to them. I will buy just their frosting. <laughs> if the frosting's that good, I'm gonna have to try it then. Cause I'm my one of my snacks is I did it growing up as animal crackers and cake icing. So I buy a tub of cake icing and just dip the animal crackers right out of it. So mm, I'm gonna have frosting. to try their yeah, their frosting. Their frosting. See, and Farmstead Smith's never been there. Not alone. <laughs> Okay. Where was the one you went to? I thought it was like down like in Florida yeah. or North Carolina. <laughs> no. You're not right. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, I need pasta. I had pasta once this week, so if that shows you anything about how this week has been. Yeah. A see, it's a southern grocery chain. Yeah. We've been there a couple and times. And another one says I haven't either. No. Are you wanting me to say those magic words? No, I'm just saying I'm not alone. That's that all. you were right. I'm gonna send you my fatty cake dip recipe. That sounds amazing. <laughs> do it, Farmstead. Yeah. We love that. She likes trying new cake recipes. I do. She's got a couple. In I her do. Back I love pocket. making like the better than sex cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my good. daughter's just like That's ooh. Yeah. She's in that phase. <laughs> you can't hold hands without her being yeah. like, uh, ew, "Excuse yeah. me, <laughs> That's gross." Wait till you get older. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love pizza, pasta, and chocolate. <laughs> Nothing wrong that, with that. <laughs> I, was gonna, I feel like you hit all I'm the main food there, groups yeah. right there. So, Reese's Reese Cups, that's, that's him. mine. Yeah. That's him. White so, chocolate, what did you guys have? Okay, so now you're talking about food. So, it's like roughly 9 49 here. What did you guys have for dinner? Tell me what you had for dinner. We were supposed to have venison. So those that, yeah, that missed it earlier, we were supposed to have steaks. Mm -hmm. I sent them out the thaw and went to go grab some steak fries real quick and came back home and 
the dogs were eating supper without us. Yeah. So the they dogs ate, ate deer our steaks. Venison. They had steak for dinner. Yeah. So we were Some not steak. pleased with them. Their punishment was they got the steak table. <laughs> they punishment. were looking at the, yeah, they the were, window. I like, thought they were going to drool all over the window. <laughs> like uh, to the cats. But even the chickens and turkeys were trying to chase them off the venison. So apparently everybody on this farm except for like our grazing animals like venison. Mm-hmm. Actually has to be ramen. You know what, Rustic? I like me a good cup of like the hot ramen with shrimp flavor. I eat that often Chicken for like too. lunch. I miss pasta. Alex, the French guy cooking, just made a pasta using just pepper, butter, and pepper. Oh, it looks so creamy. Creamy pasta is the worst though because like that's one where it's like you can't stop eating it. There's no control. You have to eat it till it's gone. Well, we got the na- Tasha, reason. Tasha, you why- have spaghetti. Yeah. We got the reason why it's called fatty dip cake. Its base is a block of cream cheese and a stick of butter. <laughs> <laughs> that totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That did no explanation That's, needed. No. Yeah. That totally makes it sense. Was it sounds amazing. Spaghetti. So I hope I've n- I've never had anything like glutinous 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 free. Um, I've never had anything gluten free that I'm aware of. I may have without knowing it, but yeah. Sausage, peppers, and oh, onion sandwich. Good. Ooh, Margie, rocking it with the sausage and peppers. We had pizza and used lavish bread as the crust. Low mm. carb deliciousness. That nice. sounds nice. I am a carb fiend. I really probably shouldn't. Carbs and um, my vice Mountain Dew kickstarts. So off kilter on your pizza. Did you also maybe do that in like an outdoor oven? Those seem to be getting popular around here. We've noticed some people have them outside yeah. on their patios. Yeah. And I think that's cool. I always wanted to Ooh, consider it. Ramen. They look nice. That sounds good. Working on tacos. I like tacos. I'm partial on tacos. I can't have the hard shell. There's just something wrong about that. It's got to be soft. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really weird with textures. So... If it looks delicious, that's fine. But if I bite into it and it doesn't feel how I think it should feel when I bite into it, um, I'm probably going to gag. So, yeah. Tacos are, yeah. I don't know. Tacos, it's not like the, it has nothing to do with the texture. I just, you ever figure like when you're raised a specific way and you don't eat things a lot, like as a young child, like even as an adult, you're like, yeah, I don't eat those. Tacos were one of those things. Cream cheese, too. She doesn't like... Or, I'm not cream cheese. Cheesecake. She doesn't like heat cheesecake because no. of the texture. No. I'm trying to win her over on that one, but... It has sense. to be made, like, a specific way. And even then, it's, <laughs> it's a toss-up. Oh, Tasha. That's a hard task. Two of my kids are allergic to gluten. Oh. Fortunately, there's a lot of gluten-free stuff. Yeah, now, there is. So there that's is. getting bigger. I'm sure, like, back in like in the beginning, that probably wasn't I easy. I a cousin who's allergic to it as well. It's easy. Meat and veggies is always... Yeah, that's true. Meat and veggies is always gluten-free. Soft shell for me. Yeah, farmstead. Uh-huh. No, we want to make an outdoor oven out of cob, but doubt it'll happen before we move to Ohio. You will be neighbors! Ohio! That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's my old what, what, yeah, what, what, oh, what, boop, 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 boop. what, what part in Ohio are you moving to, Haas? Mm-hmm. Sisters from another misters. Yeah, buddy. That's right, Adrian. Haven't had dinner yet. It's Saturday just after midday here. Deb, where are you? Wow. It's Saturday f- just far, far away. On. You're in the future. Yeah. <laughs> You're in That's the like future. when I traveled to India. It was like 13 <laughs> hours ahead, I think Well, it was. yeah, but you guys work 50. like night shifts. So, like, yeah. he was actually working when yeah. I was working. It was very weird. Great. You're in the future, Deb. Uh, what is it like in the future? Cheesecake. I don't care for any kind. See, thanks, Margie. You're missing out on a great dessert. Closer to PA. Okay, Haas. Okay. I can't eat peas, beans, and chickpeas. Cause of, see, I like peas. But they have to... I like peas with anything, but I really like to have peas mixed in with macaroni and cheese. It's delicious. Yeah. I love it. Mark looks at me like I'm an alien. Yeah. But I'm I think one of those that has to have the food. <gasps> Deb's in South Australia. Oh, that's cool. That is really neat, Deb. We, that's like our bucket list. Yeah, it is the visit. bucket list. I pr- you probably hear that all the time, though. Like, oh, I want to go to Australia. Mm-hmm. But, like, I really do. Like, every. It looks super. It's cool super now. Cool. We can say we know somebody there. Yeah. 
But anyways, on the food, I have to have mine separate. Yeah, it can't touch. And yeah. our daughter has a carrot <laughs> as well. Pass that on. Um, when she was younger, yeah. she wouldn't eat certain things with the same fork. So, <laughs> so speaking of our daughter's food traits and stuff, I'm actually started her a little bit on coffee. So he's I, I maybe he's making so a now, club. Yeah, I'm not in and it. And she's trying to join it, and she went. She has not developed a taste for coffee yet, but my daughter likes it. So. We'll eventually get her over on it. <laughs> Peas and cheese. Yes. Farmstead's with me. It's beautiful. There. I bet it is, Deb. I bet it is. So, Deb, tell me a little bit about yourself. Do you homestead? Do you have goaty goats? What do you have out there? What is... I'm going to throw lots of questions at you because you're in the future and you <laughs> have to know a lot more than me. So, what are some of the um, specific roadblocks or um, obstacles that you faced in Australia that um, we here in the States probably don't. Love green beans, but they don't have that. <laughs> but they don't have that skin. Yes, yes my, my food, food can't, can't touch. Man, Tasha, right there. <laughs> you guys are all silent. That's the only way to do it, yeah. Well, you don't like um, ranch on your watermelon either, so. <sighs> yeah. I don't think Salt most works people... just fine. I don't think most people like ranch on their. See the cool animals. So on that note of cool animals as Ashley mentioned we have a surprise animal come into the farm yes. but when we went to go pick it up they, they had as a donk it was pretty cool and if I had had deeper pockets mm -hmm. it would have come home with me because I want as the donk the top half so looked bad like a donkey yeah but its legs were striped yeah. like a zebra which was pretty cool looking it looked yeah but I've heard zebras are um ill-tempered and are not easily tamed. But I'm hoping maybe the donkey part of it would have brought it. But they actually had a zebra They had a full-blood zebra. Yeah. They said, oh, you missed it by like two days. It was here. <laughs> yeah. But they wanted a lot more money than we would pay for it. Yeah, they wanted like upwards. Like, it was either 2500 or 5500 I'm thinking yeah. probably 5500 is like, more. We could buy a nice tractor truck for that. That isn't rusty. <laughs> Yeah, and I probably could get a lot more use out of said tractor than the zebra. No, <laughs> see the ranch no, I see it. I, I, I see love it. this group. I they see all it. make really good sense. This is the most logical group I've ever worked with. Shut up! It's because we're siding with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys are all just geniuses. I mean, you guys are awesome. Food needs to stay its own. No, you need to mix <laughs> that stuff all no. up. Come on. It'll mix when it gets to your belly. Do. What? Yeah, WT? Exactly. It, hey, now, if you ha don't knock it until you've tried it. <laughs> don't Farm try said it. make a video. I'm I don't believe it, it don't until you have a short yeah. of you eating watermelon with ranch on it. <laughs> I'm waiting. Seriously, my eyes about fell in my head when she did <laughs> I know. It. It's like, like, oh, just put my ranch on my watermelon. He's <laughs> like, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we put Zonky, salt. That's yeah. about it. <laughs> Wait, ranch on their watermelon? No, just no. And people thought I was weird for ketchup on. Um, now, see, ketchup on everything is, like, accepted. Yeah. But I had an aunt that she made us, like, citrus chicken. And this is, like, my uppity weird aunt. And I put <laughs> ketchup on her chicken. And she's like, excuse me, you want ketchup? Because it's an insult, I guess. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I want ketchup on this chicken because that's how I eat it. Yeah. We both <laughs> but agree ketchup. I don't ketchup's eat ketchup good. on all chicken. Yeah. Her chicken, she had like the crappiest fry on it. It was not fried right. It was like mushy. And if it's going to be mushy with texture, I'm going to have to mask that with some ketchup so the mushy is acceptable. Yeah. It was either that or puke. So I, I think I picked the better alternative. Ranch on watermelon works, guys. It yeah. does. Yes, I wanted a flying <laughs> fox. Since, oh, that would be cool. That would be super cool. A zonkey. We've heard that name called for, too. Yeah, zonkey. And then Ashley came up with a unique name. Deborah. A Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah. Like, no. That sounds like, like, like it's a the, Deborah. It's like somebody running into in an office, yeah. not in a phone. Borders phone. between states are closed mostly, so I haven't been able to see my oh, Navy. So. Oh, Deb, that's terrible. Since January? Hmm. Oh, is it because of all this COVID? I, it would have to be because of all the COVID stuff that's happening all, all around the world. Skipped right off, uh, over off kilter because they asked. No, talked I, about ranch again. I, she don't want to. No, I read it out loud. She don't want to address no, it. We have that hearing. intervention. Selective hearing, yeah, yeah. guys. Back me up. Yeah. I read off kilter's but comment he, and I responded and with it, a rebuttal. He also catch up on almost everything. I kept said same, that. Same here. Yeah. I said that, but I read that. You're going to have to say I'm right. Yeah. Ketchup's like, Make him say I'm right like the frosting of like dinner foods. 
I will knock it. I'd rather die. What, Farmstead? You'd rather... Those were some strong words. Uh, I am wounded. Yeah. I think Pocky Chip... Oh, them. off kill. Well, you know, another life with Pocky Chip would be great. I like honey on chicken. Well, I yeah. like honey. That's Honey's cool. Good. Honey's good on a lot of I things. I like it with chicken nuggets. Honey. Yes. Yeah, it's cool. But, oh, rustic. I love ranch, but never had it on watermelon. I was... Yeah. Rustic, you can love do it. Ranch Join as much my as side. Yeah. Yeah. Join my side, Rustic. Mm -mm. <laughs> we can be Team Water Ranch. Ah, uh, COVID is why. Yeah, that's, uh, crazy. that's a bummer. I read Hopefully. it. I read it. Look, Rustic said it. I read it. I read it. Hmm? Rustic said it. I read. I read Haas's comment. Oh, you said you? I didn't. I just Say wanted it. to point it out Say more. It. Say it. Ranch is wrong on the bottom <laughs> no. Is that what you want me to say? No, that I'm right. <laughs> I, I use ketchup, but I hate the way it smells. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I don't really smell it much. But, like, my big thing I think I mentioned before was when they did the, odd, like, odd colors for ketchup. I couldn't do it. It was so wrong. It, it was it, gross. The green purple and ketchup the purple. Is wrong. Yeah, I just couldn't do purple it. Purple ketchup is wrong. I am so sorry, Deb, that because of COVID that that has kept you from oh seeing your God, son. I can you. only imagine. My ex-brother-in-law used to eat cake frosting on bread and make a sandwich. I love frosting. <laughs> I don't know so, if I could do so it on straight bread. <laughs> that sounds wow. horrific. Like, Margie, iron stomach or something. But I cannot eat, like, a hamburger. Like, the hamburger patty. It has to be on a bun. I cannot eat it on, like, regular bread where he's like, that's it's still yeah, bread. Yes, you're right, up. it is. But, like, it is on a bun. And that's where it belongs. And she don't like meatloaf. It's weird. Or yeah. chicken and dumplings, guys. It, you guys got to help me here. I'm missing out on all the good dinner. No, foods. you're not. My mom makes it for you for birthdays. Hey, look. Margie <laughs> said you read it too. So I read you got it. it. There you go. I read it. That's All something. Farms said you enjoy your dinner. Yeah. Think of your ranch and watermelon that you're going to try in a short. That'll help you get through yeah. dinner. Ranch on watermelon is huge enough for me. Come on, guys. Don't knock it till you try mm -hmm. it. Yes, a bun. Margie's with me. A I bun. Like on a bun. It's just, I like I it on a like bun. It. I think it's more that I am not with, like, if you put it on, like, slices of bread, I'm like, it is now less appealing. I don't want to eat it. Speaking of hamburgers and stuff, the venison's different when you cook it. It is. a hamburger. Like, it, it, it's very lean, and yeah. it has to fall apart. We usually have to, like, crack an egg into it. Yeah, egg or using, like, some type of grease or bacon. Grease or not touching it. Yeah. Believe it or not, like, the oils in your hand, like, when you're making... That um, was different. Like, no. using it, no, using it to cook with. Yes. Go forward, that was yes. different. Because we tried it the first time. Yeah. Just plain, and, like, they were hot. <laughs> uh, they, yeah, they were not, they were dry, they didn't cook well, they were mm -hmm. crumbly. Yeah. So that that's different, trying to cook venison as like a hamburger. Yeah. So. Yeah. Chicken dumplings are good if they're made the right way. Yep. And it's funny because everybody seems to make them different. My, they look like snot. No, no. Her mom makes a good and mean chicken dumplings. She makes it for my birthday because she feels <laughs> bad for me. So <laughs> she makes good ones. So. Chicken, like, you know, I, you know, and I'll be really honest, okay? You're going to lose I have not been, I know, That's I like have not been at all about food. it. It looks like snot. Yeah, it yeah. smells delicious, yeah. but it feels like snot <laughs> in your mouth, I suppose. I imagine that's what it looks like. It's got, it just, you know what I mean. And I will be, I will admit, I have not tried it since I've become an adult. And I think if I can eat squid tentacles, no. then I can eat chicken and dumplings. So I will challenge myself and film it, me getting sick over it. <laughs> and I will try. My daughter thinks this is so funny. Uh, Haas, I am totally murkin. <laughs> you guys are like awesome me. in this group. I may get in, be able to get things for dinner now that I have missed for so long. I'm going to try the ranch. Of, uh, Margie, yes! <laughs> Makes pork with... I have heard that because of, like, the mm. fat content. That's why deer burgers don't stay well together is because it's so lean. Oh, Put that's bacon. Good. Oh, that sounds good. She loves yeah. bacon with her burgers, too. So that would be... Pork amazing. fat is good, so that's probably... The beef fat is best. Mm. See, I'm going to be really honest. We haven't bought beef in, like, forever. We mm -hmm. usually just get, like... Our red meat is, like, that is venison. Yeah. Every now and then we get sick of the venison and we want like real spaghetti mm -hmm. with like 
ground beef and not ground beef. Well, if it's not venison, our big is chicken and fish. Chicken we like and both fish, those. Yeah. yeah. Chicken and fish. I like the skin on my fish. I don't He's, mind it. You don't eat it. Mm -hmm. no, Are you not skin. supposed to eat the skin off of a fish? Because <laughs> I eat it. <laughs> It comes skinless, so I'm figuring you probably... Well, some of them do, but some of them come, like, on the scale, like, on the... Like, I've had trout, like, with the skin on, and I'm like, this texture is, like, crunchy. It go I'm weird. <laughs> I'm weird. This group's going to help you straighten out. It's all right. No. There, they, got, they got the right idea. If you're going to throw up, don't record it, because I can't... <laughs> That's I will play, to put a warning on there. I'll I, play theatrical music. Maybe I I, I could get I can get pretty creative. Well, on that note, music. when she had that recent video where we were back in the field and we had a a, a goat carcass there and the smell was overwhelming. That? Did you hear that? Tasha? She gagged a couple gagged times. So many times. And now she was editing that. I laughed every time. I can't help it. Like I was dying laughing as she was editing it. Me and my daughter both were just getting kicked out of it. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. And I kept going. I'm, like, I'm sorry. But you guys didn't get to see it in like one of the last videos we did, like with the donkey. There was a point where Mark is talking on screen and moves off screen. But right as he moves off screen, one of our goats let the worst zipper fart that I've ever heard in my entire life. And Joe was like, Oh my God. And I'm like, ew. Yeah. So I had to edit it because it actually sounded like yeah. Mark yeah, stepped like off. I did it as I walked I got I'm off camera now. I'm yeah, it just go. release. Like yeah. bowels, you can yeah. release it was pressure. Not me. It wasn't him, it was a goat, but I edited because I'm like, I don't want people to think that my husband gave a zipper fart as he walked off yeah. screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of those uh, caught on camera you didn't expect. No. See, Haas is with me. Some fish is good to eat with skin. Okay. Thank you, Haas. You're on my side this time. Mm -hmm. You get a point. <laughs> I should start keeping like a point system if we're going to have food conversations like this. So weird. You must eat the skin. Yes. And it's the same with baked potatoes. Like, I feel like you need to eat the skin. He'll leave the skin. And I'm like, you're not going to eat your skin. Every single time that he eats a baked potato, I'm like, you're not going to eat the skin. And I know he's not going to. But I eat mine. I wish I liked fish. Love fish sticks. Not a fan of the actual. <laughs> fish sticks are good. We eat, eat fish sticks, too, so you that's like okay. Fish sticks, yeah. We like that, too. Yeah, I like good. both, so. People puking makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> I'm that way. There was a YouTube channel I liked where a guy would was eat it just the, oh, oh uh, yeah. yes, and he would do that. Just basically eat something in large amounts until he got like sick. Like rancid as a challenge. milk. Like he'd be well, like, I was oh, saying always gross stuff, it, but some of it was. Okay, but uh, it was now, just amounts to, like, that were the like logic ungodly. of what you just said. Just like a gallon of regular milk, he'd drink like as fast as he could. It was Why like regular stuff. That? If you're gonna but, gag, usually it's because it's not good stuff yeah. it's yeah, but like it was like too much his body couldn't hold sometimes but anyways i would die laughing <laughs> and she would get upset because she's like why are you would watching listen something? to the same one yeah. over and over I'm like how many I times are you gonna listen to that man like puke <laughs> it was not entertaining it was hey he disturbing. had thousands of subscribers so some of my found it. He, isn't that crazy where i'm like look at my baby goats <laughs> and like a Hundred subscribers, <laughs> and like, watch me yeah. puke my guts out. It's like, he had thousands. thousands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we he know what sells. Guests on there that were we with him at some sells. point. It was, it was a mess. Margie's not a fish fan, and there are a lot of people like yeah. that. I don't mind the fishy smell or the fishy taste. Have you ever tried baking it in milk? That will help with yeah, it. That does help. It does help you with the fishy smell. Way. You've eaten it that way. You just Wait, don't. But we do what? like our fish season quite a bit too. Yes. I like the flavor, especially Parmesan yes. or something like that. I did not sign up for this contest. Tasha's like, yes, I heard it. And was like, oh my God, please don't. <laughs> please don't. Uh, I did it though. I held it down. <laughs> yeah. Pat on the back for that one. My dog, when she eats deer meat, leaves the nasty. Uh, Dude, really? Like dog farts are, they're enough to gag a maggot. Like, ours do it to where it wakes us up at night, where it's like, yeah. oh, who's, who is sitting around. on a cigar? Like, this is terrible. I don't get that. Love enough. the skins on potatoes, yes. Yeah, same here. I eat the meat of the potato and treat the skins like a biscuit. Potato skin butter sand. Ooh. You know, you that might be a good way to get you to eat it. Yeah. It, it, and I guess, like, maybe that comes, like, if you bake it good, where, like, the skin is, mm -hmm. like, crisp. But I don't mind if it's crisp or, like, not as mm -hmm. crisp. I, I like the skin on my fries. 
I'm pretty sure fried. everybody does. Well, I, well <clears throat> they have a, fries have a specific consistency, mm -hmm. so maybe salt. that's salt. That's what mm. makes me like fries, salt. salt. I tell you what, though, if we do the baked potatoes, those peppers like we were talking about earlier, yeah, those will be like hot on those things. I thought he was lying. He's like, man, yeah. I need it. We, so those of you that, and now some of you have been in here for a while and you've heard of some, we do have some new people. So if you hear some repeats, I'm really sorry. Yeah. But we had canned some of our own um, jalapenos and, and peppered and, and canned them. And I would wait, waited for our jalapenos to go like orange or red. <laughs> and Mark was putting them like on our steak fries because then we put cheese and bacon on them and kind of made them like more fabulous than fries are regularly and we put the jalapenos on there and mark was eating he took like a huge forkful on his fries yeah. and he's like oh i need to go get a napkin for my food i'm sweating and i'm like they are sweating, not that bad no, so but like the first one yeah. i've been into i'm like oh you were not lying yeah, they are hot toasty still tastes good yeah which is good that's fantastic my 60 year old loves baked potato will never eat the skin i guess it's just not for everybody but I, I like the skin. We have chickens. They enjoy our skin. You know, that's that's a true that's a true true statement right there. Oh, that's a very, very true statement. I know. I've got a fly. This we is left it. the window <laughs> open. They're well, all like, because it's getting cold outside, if we leave a window open for the peppers because we mm -hmm. were cooking them, they all start hovering in now. So Yeah. Yeah, because somebody has to put their face over the yeah. griddle while they're sauteing peppers when I'm like, don't do put you your face over it. What's starting to get bad here is, I don't know if you guys get them, but those little stink beetles. The yeah. Stink well, bugs. that's the state. Yeah. That's the state bug for Indiana. Yeah. I'm sure. They're, I'm starting to see them everywhere yeah, the now. Stink There's bugs. like four or five of them in here today, and they love to just slam into the window. They okay. just like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. they do. So you're sitting there, you're like, what? Somebody you cannot smush them. them. No, they'll Why? stink. They stink. That's what they call. I, I, I keep them under a box and then I smush them. <laughs> <laughs> Great, she's got a box yeah, of so, stink so bugs. So this is this. For those of you who don't know, this this small miniature of us this is josie this is our daughter of course <laughs> she says weird things just like we do so apparently she's got a box full of stink bugs hidden somewhere in the house that she smashes yeah. i just get something and i try to smush them in it so they don't the smell doesn't come out like a water bottle or something Ooh, like a water yeah. yeah you put them in the cat thing and that's Ooh. what that's what Papa would do. <laughs> Did you see Mark move away? Cause she's like, yeah. <laughs> <He's> like mm -hmm. <laughs> plan set. Oh. oh my gosh! So what do we got? Is it, we have those yucky. Yeah, they're yucky. If you aren't sweating and elevating heart rate, it's <laughs> not hot enough. <laughs> you know, know cause like um, I have a brother in law that you would get along with very very yeah. well. Like he'll make hot wings to where they're almost not edible. He but loves he them. Heat, yeah. He loves he them. Handle. But like for the rest of us, we're like. I can smell that from here. And I like spicy, but like yeah, that. yeah, yes. And we have flies trying to get in the in my house. Yeah, no, it's that no. weird time where the temperature starts dropping, where they're like, "Please don't let me die." Yeah, and I'm like, I cannot wait for the demise inside. of insects at this point in the year. Yeah, I cannot wait. <clears throat> but <laughs> just clearing it up. Yeah, so what do you guys got planned for this weekend? I know we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. We've got like church outing and a windows. pumpkin carving um, windows. party. Yeah. yeah, windows is like the church gathering. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I know. And she's, somebody's yeah, excited. she loves it there. Somebody's excited. There's hay corn mazes and the hayride and pumpkins and the fly. This is, n <laughs> this is <laughs> not the debate, okay? Mm -hmm. Get. Yeah. <laughs> Lands on <Yeah>. our head. <laughs> but yeah, it's... So we got the, also the pumpkin carving contest, which mm -hmm. she will probably do well in because she's an artist. So we tried that when we were younger and uh, mine was, I don't think you could tell what it was, but. Mm -hmm. It was um, interpretive. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever I see things like that where I'm like, I don't know what it is. I'm like, well, this is an interpretive piece of art yeah. because it can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. That's her way of saying something <laughs> That's like, that's that my way of saying like, wow, but that's But it still crap. looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her go, artistry way of doing it go to 7-eleven or circle k get him his own pocket chip. you know but then like his wife has to deal with like whatever gastrointestinal issues he has afterwards so i have to pass it with her first. Uh, i'll grab it for him. <laughs> <laughs> i'm willing to watch other people eat things and sweat i mean that's just not me yeah he like he really does enjoy the hot stuff i admire him for that because i I but I will, I will be like super honest. 
Like food wise, I was not very uh, adventurous until I met Mark. I didn't like jalapenos. I didn't like um, buffalo sauce or anything like that. I, it just wasn't anything that I liked eating. Like we fight over the jalapenos now, which I'm sure like he regrets. Do you regret it? it? No. No. Now you pickle them and make them. So. Yeah, now I pickle them and make them for us. So yep. that's pickle. That's man. good. I get to work on Dodge water. Oh, on a Dodge water on pump. My most hated water pumps. Oh, Haas, I'm sorry. Hopefully that's not the entire day. Yeah. A portion of your day. But if you're like us and you work on any project, it's multiple trips to the hardware store mm -hmm. or to like the auto parts store. Like she mentioned earlier, she worked at Home Depot and she said it's it was funny because somebody would work on something. You'd see them. Yeah, if they bought like, like plumbing that. parts at the beginning plumbing of the day, I knew bad, I would yeah. see them about four to five times that day. Like it, and it never failed because plumbing never works. Yep. It never works the way you think it should. Honestly, not clue what we're doing, but I need to clean my coops, but keep putting it off. Yeah, it's that time of year, really. I need to be getting my barn clean and my coops clean and putting all of their sweet, sweet poops into my garden and letting it kind of cool and and do its compost thing over the winter, I think. But then that means I have to, I don't know, I don't really want to do it though. I'm with you, Tasha, like, it's, who wants to just push poop all weekend? But when you have animals, that's just, it's, it's just sure. part of it, you know. I, I spend money for them to eat and then they poop it back out. Yeah. But then it feeds us, so it is like the circle of life here. Wait, look at look food? at Joe's face. She's like, well, when you think about it, so like we feed our goats and our chickens and the donkey, and they produce poop. And they produce eat, poop. And no, no, we I produce poop fesses. that I put into the compost that then feeds the fesses, <laughs> that fesses. then feeds the vegetables and fruits that I grow, and they feed us because it helps them grow better. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't mix your fruit part, so I thought we we ate the poops. Yeah, that's that says a lot about my cooking, yeah. doesn't it, guys? <laughs> yes, I'm still here, Farmstead. I'm just talk, talk, talking away. Yes. I can't. Yeah, I just I really need to clean my coops too, but I need a lot. I need to do a lot on my coops actually. I kind of did like this revamping of my run, and I have a lot of plans and dreams and zero motivation. But it just seems like every time I have a plan to film something or to like do something specific, everything and its brother decides to break down or something happens or we get called to go do something for somebody else, which we definitely don't mind that because, you know, do unto others and all that good stuff. But sometimes it's a drag. Sometimes it is a big old drag. Everyone needs my, you know, okay, so I love your poop deck. And I know you'd ask me if I would implement that in my coop. I want to implement that in my coop. It's just the way that mine's set up. It's not a good for a poop deck. Because I've got like the nesting boxes on everything. <laughs> I probably don't need as many nesting boxes as I have on like the two separate coops. But I would like that because it makes a whole lot of sense to separate their poops to enrich my soil with their awesome nitrates. So I, you want a project? No. <laughs> I'm tied up. Sorry, no free time on my schedule. Can't take it. So, Farmstead, so the answer to that is <clears throat> I want to use your poop deck, but I need to redo we'll some things because honestly, it makes more sense the way you're doing it than the way that I'm doing it. And that's the wonderful thing about homesteading. You'd see how someone else is doing it and be like, yeah, I need to change my system to mirror that because it's just way easier. I better not be, it better not be a whole day project. I'm going to tell my father-in-law for every hour I'm dealing with, he gets a level lower package for his retirement That home. sounds like a solid threat. <laughs> but you know, you just jinxed yourself saying it better not be. That's the way my brakes are on my truck right now. I just think I get done one day. And, yeah, he popped the yeah. tire off and then like three hours later, he's just standing. Yeah. I come home and he's literally standing with his hands on his hips just looking at it. Yeah. I'm like, this is not going and well. And then I thought he's... parts of... Came with the brakes, it didn't, so I had to go yeah. back again. And or order like them. certain stores had yeah. the one part, but not the other two parts. Mm -hmm. So it was. Yeah. And those were his days off of work, which those are. Isn't that sad? Like for us homesteaders or people that do anything like what we do, our days off are just filled with chores that we can't get done in the weekend time to try to get ahead. Because none of the chores that we're doing are reoccurring, right? Uh, let's brainstorm if you want to try. <laughs> I, I, I would like that. Have you ever raised silky chickens? So I have had silky chickens, Isaac. I found that they were not very bright. 
They're very soft and fluffy. Broodiest chickens ever did brood on this earth, but they weren't smart. And that bothered me, so I don't have them now. Yeah. But they're really cute, and like for broody, brooding purposes, like you you won't find a chicken that's better at brooding than like a silky. Silkies just have like the best instincts to go broody. Sounds like my husband, no more projects. <laughs> I want a shed coop, yeah? Yep. I think really good. <laughs> my biggest problem too is when I'm working on things, you can ask her. Some reason bugs are attracted to me. Like when I was trying to work on my truck, for some reason that I had a swarm of bees that kept landing on me. Yeah, I don't know why. That was like Tuesday. I was calling. He was so angry. He's like, there were like thirty bees in my truck yeah. and around my truck. I'm like, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> and then like I don't know, they like my bone shiny head, I guess. So they'll be crawling on it constantly while I'm working on something. She like whack, knocks them off my head, and it's like there's. A, I don't know why, but when I work Bugs on like stuff, it, it, it's just... I, I mean, know. even like in the summertime, we can all be sitting outside, and he will be the only one getting bit okay. by bugs. But I'm always wearing cologne or something like that, so maybe that attracts me. But I cologne. like your cologne. Yeah. Like your if it's attracting cologne. bugs, I don't know how much I like. <laughs> so, Farmstead yeah. says no. No silkies. No to silkies. You're sweaty. I gotta show that. You're sweaty noggin. You know, for some, for some for some reason, YouTube did not want me to show your comment. I'm thinking it thought it was something <laughs> <Sweaty> dirty, <noggin. laughs> but like maybe that's a code word How for something you else. Say <laughs> I have a few silkies, and oh my god, always yeah, and that is a good point. Like they can go broody to the point where you're like, for the love of goodness, lady, like your body condition is not good enough yeah. to keep being broody. I have some stupid model job <laughs> chickens who won't <laughs> stop going broody. Uh, well, we had that one recently. She mentioned that brooded up till like what four two days. days. Yeah. She was getting ready to go into and lockdown just, and just and got up and left them. Was, I was very angry. Yeah, we thought we were getting. Chicks. I know. I was like, oh, more chicks, and I only let them sit my salmon fabrol eggs, which could technically have been fabricanas because I have an americana rooster. But yeah, it is what it is. I wouldn't know about it being an icky word. <laughs> I, I well, I was kind of like, hmm, what do you? Why is sweaty noggin not okay for you too? <laughs> sweaty noggin. So everybody says they are so broody, but mine have never gone broody. I have a small flock of five white and brown silkies. How old are they, Isaac? Are they like old enough to be broody? I don't know. Maybe they're just they're not down for motherhood yet. Yeah, that's and weird. Sometimes you just have chickens that aren't. Yeah, and, like we've had some like that. Yeah, it's been two or three years since I've had a chicken go broody. And this year I had like three go broody mm -hmm. all at the same time. It was really weird. So cool. Here's a chicken from a noob. Will a flock all turn on an old chicken that is nearing the end? Went outside and they were pecking. Us. Well, they're pecking order. So if you have a lot of, in my experience, I usually have like two or three alphas. Then you have a lot that run in the middle and like, one or two at the bottom mm -hmm. if your older girl used to be kind of in the middle and is now moving to the bottom yeah they will they'll gang up on her i don't think they they intend to like put her out of her misery but chickens are actually pretty vicious like they seriously are little dinosaurs yeah. <laughs> and especially when they see blood on yeah each other, they'll, the, they'll they'll peck to mm -hmm. assert a pecking order but then once blood or red appears like yeah, it has to be covered immediately if you yeah do something yeah. Because we got that powder we put <clears throat> on on the change. Yeah, if she's sick or like off in a corner by herself, they very well could be targeting her, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, at that point, like, I, I don't even know how you go about re reintroducing her. Chickens are dicks. <laughs> they <laughs> are. They really are. They have attitudes. They have, they have bad attitudes. They are about, they're two years old, Isaac, and not going oh, pretty wow. for you. I'm that's, guessing, like, you've got a rooster and everything. Yeah. But that's, that's weird. Maybe you just got some that are just, like, not, maybe they're focusing on their no careers first. There. <laughs> they might be focusing on their careers. I have a diocle in the house right now that started with a limp and now can't, oh, no. Oh, that's awful. I actually like diocles, though. Yeah. I do. I, I do. I very mm -hmm. much like diocles and deanvers. Um, or anything that's got, is like muffed or has a beard. I love any chicken that has like a beard. Yeah. We found I love beards. So yeah. He shaved his. I was upset with him. Yes. <laughs> we quarantined here with something. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they sort of prey on the weak, unfortunately. Yeah. Like me. Yeah, I didn't believe the bird and dino connections until I got chickens. Dude, I'm telling you, you talk talk to our dog because our turkeys stalk our, Austra our miniature Australian Shepherd. Like, to the point where he, <laughs> we've come out and he's been, like, up against, like, the back porch door with turkeys all around him. You know, like, mm -hmm. that scene in Jurassic World where Owen is, like, Telling the raptors to like yeah. stop, like that was Django, but they were not listening. Yeah, and, and if they get him running, he'll like run around the house and then stop at the door, like, "Hey, I'm here! Hurry up, open!" <laughs> and if we don't open it in ten seconds, he's off again because they're right on his tail. <laughs> so it's hilarious to watch. It's like ring around a rosy. Oh, two roosters and no, no broodies. Isaac, I don't know, buddy. But yeah. you know, like maybe they they'll get to it. I wouldn't give up hope on them, but I wouldn't count on them either to be your broodies. Which is weird because they're known to be, like, very, very broody. Millie Fleur, the opals. Millie Fleur. Aren't they beautiful? Like, ser who, can not, who can say no to that feather pattern? Mm -hmm. Who can say no to that? I really like the, um... Is it, like, the blue and red stenciled wine dots? Those are really pretty. Or, like, their, their base color is either... Is it red or is it blue? I think it's blue with like red stenciling or vice versa, obviously. Mark's like, I don't know. No, no, no. But they're beautiful. They're really pretty. As long as it lays eggs and I can enjoy She's it. a gorgeous little golden diocal, but I have no clue what's going on with her. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Usually when I had chickens go down leg wise, like I always suspected Merrick's, but if you got her from a hatchery that possibly vaccinated her as a chick, she shouldn't have Merrick's, but Merrick's isn't. I've. I've only pulled one chicken through Merrick's, and they promptly got it again the next season, and I lost her. And that wasn't fun. Like, that literally was, like, working her legs and making sure, like, her whole body didn't didn't go downhill. It was not fun. Probably not fair to her. Probably should have dispatched her. But you learn that as you go. I have a stronger urge to save things <clears throat> and to doctor them rather than looking at it and saying, this quality of life is not good for you and... I'm going to take the next step and dispatch you. We put something down when we can't guarantee their quality. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with you, Farmstead. Adrian, 100%. Like, two weeks, pretty much. At that point, you're you're suffering and your animal is suffering, honestly. It's just, it's just a lot. A broody peahen. She has to pee chick. We have a male and two females. Well, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. There are a lot of different breeds of peacocks that we've been seeing pop up. I'm part of, like, Indiana's Peacocks Facebook page because I might want peacocks. He's had bad experiences with peacocks, so I'm probably going to lose on that one, which is totally fine because I'll settle for pigs instead. That's Fair trade. <laughs> you gotta give and take. Yeah. Sometimes if you're getting hatchery chickens, they just don't do that. You know, yeah. they, and that's really true. And that's sad to think that you, like, pay extra or, like, for McMurray, I think, like, you can you can check mark what you want done with them before they come to you. But you're right. There's, there's always those that fall through the cracks with the hatcheries. Not to mention, like, I love when people think they're getting exhibition quality birds from a hatchery. Like, the salmon favorel I got should have had five toes. Like, my best looking hen has three. Four toes should have five total. So that's a disqual on her. And I only worry about that for 4-H because I don't want Joe to like take something to 4-H and the judge look at her like, um, did you not look at the standard of perfection here and just bring like a ch whatever chicken you wanted to because sometimes judges can be brutal. But they're kind of, that's their thing. you approaching them to have your animal or yourself or your projects judged. So people are so quick to say Merrick's, but it's definitely not that, you know? Mm. I'm giving her a week. I have, oh, well, Tasha, I hope that she comes through it. Yeah. Maybe like a vitamin deficiency then, perhaps? Yes, I definitely don't want her to suffer. Oh, that's so hard. And chickens, we have a fabulous vet who's well-versed in goats, but I think he would laugh at me if I brought him a chicken. Just because that's not normal, mostly in our area, like people would just dispatch. Um, Tasha, I had something more. Oh. It was a type of cancer. Not. Ah. Mm. That's so awful. Awesome. Not bad. You know, necropsies are something that are not, are not widely utilized, and they should be. 
we wanted to have a necropsy done on our llama, but that would have been intensive to yeah. get him to... Plus, we had a good idea what it was, so... Yeah, I'm almost 100% I know what it was. Cases we've had. Yeah. Try nursing starts. The one I tried nursing starts. Oh. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Barracks, I found that that happened a lot, too, but it was because they were down, and if you weren't good about clearing their vent, then... It's like getting um, pasty butt for chicks all over again and it, it basically rots their insides. I got a rare exhibition breed to begin with. I don't know that and allowed them to be in a mixed group so I hatch big, pretty, and gentle. Oh, Aww. that's cool. And that's okay. Yeah. That's why I like that's hard okay. rocks. Yeah. That breed always seems to be like a more gentle breed. <laughs> You can ask her. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Because of the personality. They just were yeah. laid back. I liked modern games. I had like modern game Bantams. They were super cool. Mm -hmm. I named my first pair, I named Pierre as the boy. And the girl's name was Ness because in Spanish, Piernas is legs. And they have really long legs. I thought I was clever with that one. But they actually like for what they were, they were very gentle, very, very gentle chickens. But I, some of them can be a little. Yeah. 13 Rins Homestead. Hey, how you doing? I was trying to get over there to check out your um, new trailer video earlier today. And then I was at work and <laughs> the whole watching YouTube at work thing just yeah. <laughs> doesn't work out so well sometimes. <laughs> they to. usually they frown upon that. These are lemon cuckoo. Oh, that sounds. Orpingtons mm. are awesome. They are awesome. But you let them. Well, summers are cool too, though. Like really, both those breeds are, those are nice. You see now that, honestly, like, that type of vet is fantastic that will actually, like, invite you in to be like, okay, this is how you do a necropsy because then you can do it yourself. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's good working with Ashley because she I, actually used I to work with him. I shadowed him for years, So he's though. always been really yeah. helpful. Yeah. But he is a bigger animal vet. He is. He, he mostly um, cattle, pigs, and equines. Mm-hmm. Even though everybody in the vet community knows, like, the money is in the small animals. Mm -hmm. Small animal practices. That's why you don't see a whole lot of large vet practices. But he's, I mean, he's phenomenal. But he always looks tired. Yeah. He always looks so tired. I don't, think he's, I don't know where he, when he goes home. He's always there. No, like, like every home, time I have an emergency, emergency he's, he's like, like, I'm, I'm here. Like, yeah. Bring it. And I'm like, and we can almost see his office. It's that close. I yeah. Mean, he's only about mom and half time. Oh, road. yeah. And so. he's, he's a great guy. Like, really, he's... A big, a big proponent of like 4-H. He's a big um, one to go to auctions and like mm -hmm. bid up animals for kids. So I really appreciate that. I remember when we got two goats from you guys. I know, and you guys got those two cuties. I hope that they tamed down for you. Um, the one, which one was it that I, Bell's baby, the brown, the old brown one, Harmony. It was Harmony, yeah. That's Harmony and Honey. They were sweet. I really hope. Now, Isaac, were you going to show this in 4-H? Because I think they're going to do a really good job. At least I really hope so. And both of their mommies were like fantastic milkers for me. And so even-tempered. Mm -hmm. Like, great temperaments. I feel sorry for that side. You know, they really are underappreciated. Mm -hmm. And when I shadowed him for years, people are evil. Um, I think that's why I don't like people. <laughs> Working in a vet's office, so we had several people that would come in and be like, I need this animal to be put down. And when you ask them why, it was be just because. They, they just, we'd offer to rehome, but they, they'd come up with some kind of crack pipe idea. Like, oh, it, it bit this kid, or it did this, or it did that. And you could tell, like, that animal did not deserve what was being done to it, but it was not fun. Not fun at all. But on the off side, like, on the flip side of that... There were some really wonderful people that run some really tight, wonderful operations in this area and that are still mentors and are like the first people that I call if I have a problem that I don't think is vet worthy, but I think is like, I need another set of eyes on it. Mm -hmm. So, so 13 moons. I have color pack, blue sapphire, Plymouth. Oh, oh wow. Golden what a mix. Wine dots, barn builders. And, oh, you've got all the pretty ones. All the pretty ones. That's a pretty cute cool vet one on there. Town I'm from in Indiana has two vets. They were both large animal vets, but saw house pets today. I think that's that where is exactly yeah. what it is. Yep. 
Yep, he does do a lot for small animals, but he does usually have like half a day. And she not said full days. when she worked for me, he seemed to prefer the big animals. He too. prefers the big animals. Mm -hmm. People, and I think it's the mentality of a vet in correlation with the mentality of people with small pets and the people that run larger livestock. Because there is a mentality difference about someone who has a pet or maybe is a pet owner that shouldn't be a pet owner versus like someone who owns livestock that is like very invested in their animal's health and is like, do what you need to do to get this animal through. Mm -hmm. uh, good and bad on both sides, not saying one's right or, or wrong. It's yeah, because the last time we went and saw him, he was talking about a horse auction. He was... Yeah, he likes oh, horses. Yeah. He really does. He what do you leans towards the equine. He, he has uh, um, he, he has a Belgian. He has yeah. a Belgian mare that was actually left. Someone brought her to him and said like they Huge couldn't get horse. her bred. They needed to have her looked at. She had mastitis, which is not as common in horses as it is in, like in goats. So when he told me like she had mastitis, like a severe case, it was crazy. But she ended up being bred. And they just left her there, like left their farm, moved away, and left poor old Gertie there. And Gertie had Gunther, and Gunther is still there today. Mm -hmm. And they are like the sweetest horses ever. He's wonderful. Yeah, but he was talking about how the prices yeah. of horses. The horse, uh, the horse prices yeah. in this area are inflated. Yeah. And I guess it's because like they're um, not as sought after as they used to be. They really are like a luxury item, which I understand why. Mm -hmm. But because of that, there's been a slack in horse breeding in our area. So because there's less supply and the demand has gone up, like the Pertron mare at this Illinois auction went for like 45 grand, 55 grand, something like that. Like it was, it was a crazy amount for a draft horse. Um, but I mean, he likes his equines like a lot. And he loves Australian Shepherds. When I had my Australian Shepherd, every time he saw uh, Miss Athena, he just went on and on about Australian Shepherds. Oh, look, Isaac did show. Oh, you did? Honey yeah, is a bit skittish. I was worried about that with her. We've but got, she'll come around. I've got a couple I, yeah, like that. We've got, we got um, some show quality right now that I'm like, you're going, you will love me, I promise. Yeah. When they go into milk, I found like skittish animals, especially like the dairy goats. When they um, become pregnant and you go through labor with them and milking, it's like... It creates a bond. Yeah, it really does. It's like those walls drop mm -hmm. and it calms them down. So I'm really glad that Harmony did well for you. I think was Harmony... I think Harmony was out of Belle and Belle has some fantastic lines. Like really behind her. She's got some really, really good lines. Yeah, that route, it was it was bad. I had like my 1,000 hours for volunteer time for Purdue. At that time, they, they required the 1,000 hours. And actually being there like for um, some euthanize, euthanizing of animals. Yeah, I think you have to really have like an ability to put a wall up on yeah. your emotions on some of that. Yeah, cause... he was there when we euthanized my Australian Shepherd. And, mm -hmm. I mean, he cried the whole time yeah. too. He's like, I've known this dog since it was a puppy. You brought her to me. And he's like, you could tell from like the moment where we were like, something's wrong mm -hmm. to like when we came in to like look at it. And I'm like, doc, she just, she can't walk. She's she can't go outside. Fast. She She's... can't go potty by herself. Like it, it's time. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, it was reassuring for me to still see that he had emotions, but yeah. vets are so underappreciated. They, they really are underappreciated. Pretty egg basket too. I bet you still need a blue egg layer. Got to get that rainbow going, yeah. 13 moons. Got to get that rainbow going. I saw a meme that said some things like, I love my livestock vet because I brought my horse into the vet. They're just like, oh, why did it run into <laughs> <laughs> Well, like when we had um, a, a doe that was going through dystocia, which is um, a kid presenting wrong in the birth canal, not going in like the, the traditional dive position. Um, actually could feel the rib cage in there when I went in internally to try to pull the kid and I couldn't. He's like, yeah, just come up here. I'm pumping like two, or was it three horses? He's like, mm -hmm. I've got three horses that got into a grain bin they shouldn't have got into. So we're up here pumping stomachs. So yeah, boiler up off kilter. Yeah, buddy. That's where I wanted to go to school was at Purdue. Um, I was like, that's why my life's <laughs> Yeah, that's why they're, they're a pet vet. You got to. Those small animals, they, they make bank. They really do. <laughs> he 
your dog ate something. I remember watching like this um, episode of Dr. Pole and it was a blue healer that like was acting so off and lethargic and the guy's like, he's so, dying. Like he was really distraught yeah. and found out like his roommate was smoking some bud and the dog got into yeah. the ashes yeah, or whatever ate, some of it. ate it and was just high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was just like, he's like so he's, on cloud nine. He's, he's totally <laughs> fine. He's probably happy right now. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, the dog did look wild though. Its eyes were all yeah. It yeah. was like, Ooh. <laughs> panting a lot. Yeah. It was entertaining. Yeah. Sense all sense. animals except primates. Hmm. <laughs> Said German shepherds do stupid stuff all the time. Hmm. Yeah. I think like the wildest thing we had brought in when I was working with him was like raccoons and mountain lions. We had like a, there's a wildlife rescue not far away and the mountain lion, when they brought the mountain lion and I was like, <laughs> I was a high school kid. So I was like, this is so cool. I didn't mm -hmm. even think like, hopefully you've got the anesthesia down for this thing. Yeah. Cause if it wakes up, we're all dead, <laughs> you yeah. know? So that, it was really interesting. Like I really appreciated that like shadowing him but there were just a lot of aspects where when you get down in the nitty-gritty I was like mm, I love animals and I'm afraid I will not love them nor will I want to have my own if I were to go into a practice because I mean he puts in so many hours so many hours but yeah he likes to talk to me about the college that I work at <laughs> he's like so how are all the crazy college kids doing or but I guess he had like a vet that worked for him that was in like one of his trucks and one of the students stepped out onto a crosswalk, but like head down, headphones on, didn't even look up, stepped out and he hit her. And it was a lot of money that came out of that vet practice because it was in, he wasn't even doing anything for like, was he doing something for the vet or was he yeah, just, was he was running like a, an errand. It wasn't even like a real vet yeah. call, but because he was like in the vet's truck too, it was, it was bad. Yeah, lawsuits. And it was really else. bad. Yeah. Well, in like our, and I'm sure that's like that on a lot of campuses, but our campus is consisted of um, tr trust fund babies. Like <laughs> they're, they're they're very wealthy. Yeah, yeah. Like wealthy clients. Very wealthy, and yeah, you can imagine the lawyers that they um, gunned up with. It was it was a free for all. That was crazy. All right, Farmstead, you have a good night. We're getting ready to sign off here anyways because it's like 11 and we started at 8.30. Yeah. It's about time for us to get off of here too. I really appreciate everybody. It's kind of like hung in there with us though. You guys have been awesome. I feel like we've had some really good interactions, but mm -hmm. I'm with Farmstead. I'm probably going to go to bed. My night time, my bedtime is at 10 o'clock, so I'm up past my bedtime. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> that's my so bedtime. Yeah, and I the chickens need to be month. put up. So yeah, yeah. All and right, just guys. Just as a heads up, do not try ranch on the watermelon. No, do it. No. It's good. It's no. good. Don't knock it till you try.